Good evening, everybody. I'm just admitting people from the waiting room. People are coming in, so. Um, give it one more second. All right, I said admit all, so hopefully that will just work. Okay, I think everyone's coming in. Uh, good evening. This is a special meeting of the City Council. Today is June 23rd. I am Gina Louise Shara, and I will be presiding this evening. This meeting and all who participated in it with us on Zoom will be audio and video recorded. There's only one item on the agenda for this evening, which is the continuation of the presentation and discussion of the Northampton Policing Review Commission, which is a joint special commission of the City Council and the Mayor. Called special meetings of the council do not follow the order of business for a regular meeting of the city council in our rules. There is no public comment for a special meeting, but I have made the decision to add up to a two hour period of public comment before we convene. I will apply the same rules to this public comment as to our regular meeting. You may speak to us on any topic as this is not a hearing. Due to the size of the meeting that is public and how Zoom works, all participants will need to be muted until called upon. Also, all but the council and those being recognized by the council to speak need to have their video turned off. This is a council meeting and comments are to be directed to the council, only the council and those who have the floor may have on their video. We'll do our best to act quickly if someone is clearly acting in a way that is inappropriate, deploying profanity or slurs or displaying audibly or visually something outside of what one would expect in council chambers or if they are being disruptive and impeding the business of the council. And I will remove anyone that needs to be removed from the meeting. If you don't wish to make a comment, you can watch or stream on Northampton Open Media's access. The recording of this meeting will be available at Northampton Open Media's um, government video archive channel on YouTube. And I thank them as always for providing this public access. To make a public comment, please use the raise hand feature. This is how I know that you want to comment and can recognize you. To raise your virtual hand, you click on participants in the horizontal menu bar at the bottom of the screen. A column will open with the participants of the meeting. The raised hand feature is at the bottom of that column. If you're calling in by phone, you can raise your hand by hitting star nine. If you're having trouble raising your hand, you may use the chat feature to send a message to me during public comment. I will do my best to monitor that for people having technical difficulties. That is the only purpose for which we will use that function and it will only be used during public comment. I will unmute each raised hand in order. You may comment with or without video. When you begin, please state your name and your city or town for the public record. We do not respond during public comment as it is your turn and time to speak. So while your comment should be directed to us, you will understand when we don't respond. To ensure everyone has equal opportunity, each person will have up to three minutes of time. I will begin the timer when you start speaking. If the time goes off, I will ask you to please finish the sentence that you were speaking. You can always email us your comment at citycouncil at northamptonma.gov. If you email there, you don't need to email us individually. Laura forwards all correspondence to all of us. If what you want to say has been said, please indicate that briefly. You don't need to use the full time. Please make space for others. We will begin now, um, and I will call on people for two hours or until the last hand is raised, whichever is sooner. Let me just find the timer. Um, hold on. So I will do different timer for a minute. Okay. I see two hands right now. Uh, the first hand is, um, is Mimi Odgers. Uh, hello. Um, 
So, uh, hi everyone, um, it's a very hot day. Um, I want to say a couple of things. First, I just want to mention is that um, city council meetings going to the wee hours of the morning, I don't think are healthy. Um, so I really would hope that there'll come a time where the city council has a cutoff time. I know back in the days when um, Claire Higgins was mayor, there was like usually a midnight cutoff and then things, I mean, unless it was something that really to be voted on or they would take the things out of order that had to be voted on that night and anything else could just be moved to the next meeting time or something. So I just put that out there because um, we obviously want you folks to be able to be of the best sound mind when you're doing this and going into the wee hours is not a healthy function. I, I, I just want to mention that. Um, I also want to speak out about this um, commission that's been uh, proposed. Um, I have concerns that the mayor's office has um, quite a bit of power when it comes to appointing people. They will be appointing 40% of representation onto that committee. I think that's quite a bit for the executive um, office to do that. I think that those numbers should be changed, um, especially when the mayor has shown that his loyalties are to the police and the current practices of the police and Jody Casper. So I really would think that the, I would hope and encourage the council to please consider reducing that number of representation. Um, I also just feel that proposing this thing that was created by the mayor and um, the council president without any like discussion or input by anyone, it was just presented to the council um, at the last meeting was not necessarily the best way of um, trying to be engaging and working with people. Um, we've all been calling and getting involved and so not just like having two people kind of work in a back room and then present something to the council was a little unnerving, especially when the mayor seems to have such a large amount of power within this commission. Um, so I would like to make sure that the council really considers reducing the representation that the mayor's office has to possibly like 30% representation or 20% representation on the commission um, so that it owns up more opportunity for members of the outside to apply for this, because I don't know how many people will be applying through the mayor. The mayor is just going to be appointing uh, his friends, lackeys, you know, people who are going to be supportive of whatever the mayor wants. So I think for true uh, democratic process in this commission, the mayor should have very limited numbers of people that the mayor can appoint. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Annie Solinger. Hi, I'm Annie Solinger. Um, I live in Ward 6 in Northampton. Um, first of all, as regards the plan for the Policing Review Commission, I'd like to make sure that the historically marginalized communities who have been targeted and harmed by US policing practices, as the chart says, that that includes people with disabilities in addition to BIPOC. Um, I see that the commission charge includes issues like body cameras, training, and civilian oversight models. Those reforms only serve to funnel more money into policing. They try to introduce accountability into an inherently racist system. And there's so much evidence that reforms like those don't work. Um, I was initially impressed by Chief Casper's Facebook post from May 29th, detailing a laundry list of trainings and initiatives in the NPD. And then I considered the thousands of dollars of taxpayer money that funded that training, which that training merely puts a Band-Aid on a flawed system and still allows officers like Robert Powers to flourish. Um, I would ask that the commission consider moves like the following, suspending the use of paid administrative leave for cops under investigation and capping overtime accrual. To those who worry about defunding the police budget, quote, without a plan, I would like you to consider the local organizations that are already doing the work that police are ill-equipped to carry out. For example, services for people in mental health crises and for people experiencing homelessness. We can reinvest in those services other than criminalizing people's existence. And I yield my time. Thank you. Next is Adriana Piantadosi. Yes, can you hear me? Yes, beautiful. So my name is Adriana Piantadosi. I'm a resident of Ward 7, and I also have concerns about the Northampton Policing Review Commission as proposed by Mayor Narkowitz and Councillor at Large Shara. My main concern is one of efficacy. While I don't want to be cynical, the purpose of this joint commission seems to be more about placating the residents of Northampton as opposed to enacting real and impactful change in a timely manner, particularly when the stated purpose is to further discuss and research a topic that has been discussed and researched ad nauseum in the past few weeks alone. 
I've listened to hours of carefully researched statements and personal accounts from constituents and hours of deliberation from our city councilors. I've also listened to Mayor Narkowitz and Chief Casper explain to us how difficult it is to make changes to the NPD. This is the attitude with which Mayor Narkowitz intends to populate this council, one of resistance to change and loyalty to a police department known to racially profile black and brown people and abuse vulnerable members of the community. If there is to be a commission, I believe there should be input from local organizations such as maybe Safe Passage, ServiceNet, Pioneer Valley Worker Center. This commission should exist separately from Mayor Narkowitz's influence, or if it is to be a joint commission, the composition of the group should not be so heavily impacted by the mayor who intends to select 40% of the group himself by choosing six of its 15 members. Change is difficult, but change is also necessary. And while continued conversations around defunding the Northampton police are important, it's time to take further action, further concrete action to protect black lives and disassemble institutional racism in our community. This action must not be hampered by pressure from the police union or partiality from the mayor's office. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Dana Goldblatt. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, my name is Dana Goldblatt. I'm a resident of Ward 3. Uh, I don't think the commission is a good idea at this point. I just think you shouldn't do it. And here's why. Um, the commission assumes that you and the mayor in Northampton are all on the same page, that we all wanna reduce police violence and everybody wants to limit police functions and shift resources away from police. And that's not true. We're not there yet. Right now, the mayor and the police chief have been pretty vocally opposing what we're doing. So trying to get on a commission with them to, do, to make a plan to do the thing that they have indicated repeatedly they don't want to do is premature. And it just moves the fight out of the public eye and into some committee room where proxies for the city council and proxies for activists and proxies for the police will all be pounding this out. And it's not about how to do it. It's about one group of people wanting to do it and one group of people not. And then you guys, those people fighting. And that is pointless. Having a committee where people fight is silly. Until there is some kind of reconciliation between what the activists want, what the council wants, and what the mayor's office wants, this is premature. You don't write a report when the three groups responsible for writing the report all want different things. So uh, what I would suggest is that you suspend the report, uh, work on your own as the council to determine what you think the right size for the police department is. Because until you, until you guys have a real answer for that yourselves, it's premature to start writing a report about how you think policing should change. Do you guys think we need police in Northampton? How many? What should they do? And once you've answered those questions, you will know how much money you think you should give them. And once you know how much money you think you should give them, then you can have a conversation with the mayor about what he wants to do with that money. So you're sort of putting the cart before the horse here in a way that has traditionally been used to thwart activism because cart blocks the horse. So please stop doing that. Don't do that. This is not a good idea. This is way premature. If the mayor wants to get behind uh, defunding the Northampton police, he needs to say that with words. They need to come out of his face or through a statement from his office. He needs to backtrack his statement that what Borowski did to Jonas Korea was uh, appropriate and professional. He needs to take a stand on what the police did when they pepper sprayed teenagers. And until he has disavowed that, you can't be in a partnership with him to limit these behaviors because these are behaviors he wants to keep doing. So I guess the first step is really getting everyone on the same page and we're not there yet. And you don't get in that step by forming a committee and trying to write a report. That is not a good way to do that. So uh, let's not do that. Let's all get on. Thank you. Next is uh, Sakaya. Hello, uh, my name is Sakaya Bishane. I am a resident of Northampton, Ward 3B. Um, and yeah, I am speaking to you all today to, I know that you're not voting today, but since we don't get to be a part of the discussion at large, um, I'm going to speak here. Um, hard to know because I don't know what you're gonna bring up later. 
but I really don't think this is a good idea. I think it's a waste of time and energy. I think the mayor has proven that he can't be trusted and that he's somebody who is going to work to like amass power for himself. Um, and he does not represent the people. And I don't really think anybody in Northampton is interested in anything that he would have any kind of power or say on. And I also think that these kind of commissions are just kind of like energy and time sucks. And I think part of the power that we have as people comes from just our numbers and our lack of bureaucracy. And this is not, and this is not going to be something that's effective and not going to be something that's supported by the people. Um, I think even Bill Dwight from the beginning acknowledged, you acknowledged that this was not something that the people wanted. Um, and yeah, I'm, I hope that you all will keep that in mind during your discussion. Thank you. Next is Claudia Lefko. Claudia, you're unmuted. Okay, very good. So shall I, sorry. Please state your name and city or town. Oh, she muted herself, hold on. Sorry, sorry. Okay, you're Wait, unmuted. Do you hear me? Okay, sorry. Claudia Lefko, Ward 3, Northampton. So um, I wanna sort of echo some of what's been said already in terms of I'm not in, favor of the commission. I feel like the moment really to take action is, is now when we're in the throes of all this, not just in Northampton, but around the country. I worry that people who, the activists who've been involved in this for many years will not be appointed to the commission, that there are various experts in town. I'm just gonna mention Lois Ahrens, for instance, who wrote a really good letter to the Gazette today talking about looking at the whole chain it's not just about policing it's about jails it's about the da it's about everything and you know i'm not sure somebody like lois will get appointed this to this commission someone else said they thought that we should go through agencies and i agree with that that perhaps the worker center mental health agencies i think someone if you go ahead with the commission someone from the school committee i'm shocked that nobody from the school committee is is being, uh, or it doesn't show up as one of the categories. I agree that the mayor should not be appointing all these people. And I just want to say that, you know, in 2001, after 9 11, women in Northampton held what we called the Women's Congress for Peace. 200 people got together at first churches and we broke into small groups and we spent the day talking and this is a little bit maybe what Dane is thinking about we didn't have people talking at us from we had we talked to one another and people came from all sorts of perspectives and at the end of the day you get the feeling that you've actually been engaged in conversation when we're speaking in front of city council whether it's in in person or like this on the skype you don't feel like you're in conversation obviously you're not responding. So I would suggest you think out of the box, maybe organize, maybe the city council would get behind a sort of public day on policing where it would be facilitated not by city councilors, by, but by somebody like Andrea Avazian or Paula Green or somebody who does this as a business and see if we can't gather people together in some large space to spend substantial time together. So those are my ideas. Thank you. Next is Amy Olson. Hi, um, my name is Amy Olson. I live in Northampton Ward 3. Um, I'm also calling in to um, say that I don't agree with this commission and I urge counselors to oppose it as well. Um, first of all, the council or the commission seems to just make recommendations. It doesn't have any legal power and it's 15 people chosen by the council and the mayor, which people have already expressed concerns about. And that concerns me because it's not chosen by the people, whereas the people have actually been speaking. There have been thousands of people in the street. There have been hundreds of people week after week on these very long Zoom calls being very clear 
that we want to abolish the Northampton police. And there's very clear 10 demand, 12 demands, sorry, that I think you've all seen that were crafted um, at the June 6th protest and continue to be worked on. Um, but these 12 demands leading to abolition of the police. And so if you really want to listen to the people, you can and you can make choices based on what we're telling you. Um, and it seems like the timeline might be fast. I know that was brought up <clears throat> at the last meeting, but it's actually not fast enough because people have been organizing for years. As you heard from the Zoom meetings, people have had vast problems with the NPD for years. And this is really a life or death moment in a lot of ways. And so the council needs to be bold and acting and um, not just create a commission to create recommendations. We need action. Thank you. Thank you. Next is the phone number ending in 5727. Hello? Hi. Can you hear me? Yes. All right. Hello, everyone. I hope you're all in good health. My name is Jose. I live in Ward 7. And I just want to say that it's ridiculous to even think about involving the mayor in the selection process for the committee if you do make a committee because I feel like the last speaker really spoke really well when they said you've been hearing what everyone has to say for quite some time now we've been we've been on the phone and on the street and um, if you don't know what we want yet I, I you know I don't know if a committee is going to help to say the same things in a bigger room um, it, it, it will be redundant but that's okay and that's better than you passing any sort of resolution tonight. My understanding is that you aren't, you probably are not going to vote on anything tonight. And that's great because you shouldn't. Um, it seems to me like a lot of people are in unprecedented territory. And what is happening here is a lack of imagination, really, on behalf of some of our public officials. Um, I can tell you that growing up here, if I, if I can see it, if I can see the suffering, and I, as an adult now, go to the street of Northampton, I'm sorry, my daughter is uh, talking to me. I, I, I'll be right there, okay? I go to the street of Northampton to check in on my friend in the homeless population, and I know what they need and want. It's not that hard. You just have to respect them as people and individuals and acknowledge that they have human needs. That's the population that the police use as an excuse to be here. Okay, and what I want is to take care of them and to keep the police indoors. The police should only be used for violence and that's it. They complain about being called for everything. That's fine. Let them complain and let them stay in. Buy them an Xbox or a PlayStation 4. Cut their staff a little bit and let them play video games and come out when they need to kill. Okay, no, like there are some times where things are crazy. Call them when there's a bank robbery. All right, but focus the resources on the community. I feel like it's really clear now that David should not be part, Mr. Mr. Mayor should not be part of that committee at all, okay? It's very clear from what your constituents have told you. If you do form a committee, I would encourage you to include your local um, indigenous and, and people of color here. Um, the organizers here wrote a statement and I'm gonna read it for you. It, this is from probably hundreds of people. There's 19 seconds. These Just are the, all right. If you think that we will spring for a commission with no jurisdiction or binding power, you are wrong, Mr. Mayor. If you think that we'll accept a board built on reformist technique, which has been tried and failed, you're wrong, counselors. If you think that you can go behind some back door and cook up some undemocratic committee for reform when half of it is comprised of your personal picks and the rest applications, you're wrong. If there's only a little bit left, give me five more seconds. If you think that we don't see the money and energy suck that these committees are, you're wrong. If you think we don't see your actions put the safety of Northampton's people directly in jeopardy, you're wrong. There's only two more. Thank if you, you think that we will settle for anything less than the abolition of Northampton's police force, you are wrong. Thank you. Next is Karen Sullivan. Karen Sullivan. Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes. 
Hi, yes, I'm Karen Sullivan from Ward 1A. I would urge you to adopt the commission it is written in order to present the community at large with viable options for meaningful reform that is well researched and well thought out. The mayor does also need to be a part of that community. The committee also needs to be balanced so that all voices are heard and the needs are to focus on the complexities that policing in Northampton entails. They have shown they are a department open to community voice and reform. We need to move forward from that place with them. We also need to make sure that data is the basis for all decisions. We have not heard anything about actual numbers of calls and of which variety, as well as data on responses and current policies. We need to focus on our community and its specific needs rather than comparing it to other communities in other parts of the country that have had less reform already. This council has shown that it will give in to the fear tactics of mob mentality when people come to their homes and bombard them. This is dangerous for the silent majority of Northampton residents who do not, who want to ensure that they continue to be kept safe in their community while also ensuring that the varied needs of all residents are met and that there is meaningful reform. This sets a dangerous precedent and I implore the council to act out of a sense of responsibility rather than knee jerk reactions due to emotions and false information about what has happened in Northampton, especially during the riot when it is clear from the photographs that rioters were trying to break into the police department and attacked our officers who were in their standard uniforms and were offering a peaceful escort. I yield my time. Thank you. Next is Mary. Hi everyone. Um, so I know there's been a lot of talk about what we want uh, this commission to do in terms of um, creating a vision for what could be for the future in the Northampton Police Department. And I just want to make it really clear that there have been people who've been working on this for decades and we have a vision. Um, there's been some demands that have been alluded to um, prior comments that I'm just gonna go ahead and read through to make sure that you know what they are. These demands were crafted by queer people, by people of color, by young people. We are the people who are targeted by the police. We are experts in what policing looks like in this community and what needs to happen. So I'm gonna start and I'll use my three minutes to do that and if anyone else wants to- Just finish, first state your name and your city or town first. Oh, my bad. I am Mary Jones. I live in Northampton. I live in Ward 2. Um, okay, so abolish the police. Immediate cut to the New Northampton police budget by 50%. You guys started at 10. We can do better. Prioritize police officer reductions over cuts to infrastructure training and maintenance. Remove officers with histories of complaints, excessive use of force, or misconduct. Make police records public, to your point, Karen. Release police officer personnel records, including discipline, use of force evaluations, performance, and trainings. Eliminate immunity. Stop use of paid administrative leave for police under investigation. Make public any demographic data, again, to your point, Karen, age, race, ethnicity, class, gender, and sexual orientation location about arrests and stops. We allocate funds at housing and social services. We view these as immediate and actionable steps that must be taken for the complete abolition of the NPD and the institutions of policing and incarceration nationally and internationally. Next section, disarm police. No NPD carrying of lethal or less than lethal weapons. No NPD use of chemical agents. No NPD use of drone or other technologies to surveil local organizations or assemblies. No greenwashing or costly efforts to make the Northampton Police Department sustainable. No purchase of hybrid or electric cars. No installation of solar panels or other green technology in any police building. Invest intended funds in community controlled solar and public goods. Stop deadly collaborations. No use of state police against police activity. No ICE collaborations beyond the sanctuary city executive order. Eliminate CopLink, a database that shares information with immigration agencies and undermines sanctuary city protections. Withdraw participation in police militarization programs and refuse federal grants that join local Northampton Police Department with Departments of Homeland Security, Joint Terrorism Task Force, and the FBI. Ban training exchanges between US law enforcement and global military and policing entities. No new money for trainings. We know they don't work. 
During the defunding process, trainings must be vetted by a community-based external review board focused on the escalation and racial violence. If someone else wants to finish, you are welcome. Thank you. Next is Tara Orzalek. Hi. My name is Tara Orzalek and I live in Ward 4. Um, really quickly, I would like to address Karen Sullivan. Um, first of all, there is a lot Your comments should be directed to the council and to the council uh, only. To the council regarding a comment that was made earlier. There are plenty of data available on the NPD. I also reject the, um, the sense that there is a mob going around town. Um, if I am, I am a mother, I have two children in the Northampton Public Schools. My children have attested the protests and the demonstrations. There is no riot, there is no mob. Um, that is a gross overstatement. And as far as the complexities of Northampton, I guess that would include um, police getting paid ridiculous amounts of money to take other citizens around in their cars or direct traffic, which anyone with a high school education to, could do, or actually my teenage stepdaughter could also do. I urge you tonight to reject the Joint Commission proposal. I do not support the mayor's proposed commission. It is unclear what it will achieve beyond further recommendations. There is no mandate for action in that proposal. I reject the mayor's power in appointing six members of the commission. That's 40%. 40% of the members gives him far too much power without any concrete statement from the mayor and a signed pledge from him to work towards a 50% police department budget reduction and reallocation by the next budget proposal. There is no indication this mayoral joint commission will not result in a long report, see the panhandling commission report, without any action. It will be a waste of time and money, particularly since there are literally hundreds of reports on reform that have already been produced by cities and institutions in the country that could provide a quick framework for any action. Northampton is unique, but it's not that unique. There are plenty of other cities like it. Finally, I ask you to work towards implementing three concrete actions, eliminate the school resource officer position and all police involvement in the Northampton Public Schools, eliminate CopLink, eliminate all ICE collaborations beyond the Sanctuary City Executive Order. And there's a really good article by Maryam Kaba from the June 12th edition of the New York Times, where she lists many of the reports that have been produced over the years throughout the country. And in the end, her conclusion is, why on earth would we think the same reforms would work now? We need to change our demands. The surest way of reducing police violence is to reduce the power of the police by cutting budgets and the number of officers. I need more time. Okay, thank you. Next is Daniel Kennedy. Hi, my name is Dan Kennedy. I'm in Northampton in Board 4. Um, I've already actually volunteered to be part of the Joint Commission, um, and I would also volunteer to be part of another commission um, with a couple of conditions. The first is that we need action to accompany these. It can't just be uh, to produce another report. It can't just be that these commissions are happening and determining what we're doing, um, and we don't do anything in the meantime. Um, we know the needs. Uh, we know the steps that we need to take. We can look to any of the dozens of other cities making moves to defund, disarm, and disband the police. They range from gigantic cities to small cities. Plainsfield just cut their budget by their police budget by twenty five percent, just right there. Uh, they've already gone <laughs> over double what we did. Um, any committee that's formed or any task force around this needs to have a defined scope. So what is it actually meant to do? Is it just showing that racism is a thing or that racism is a problem locally or that sexism or transphobia or homophobia affect these? Uh, we already know they do. Uh, we have heard dozens of hours of testimony that they do. And if we go back and look at just police reports, we're in trouble because the people who are experiencing this harassment don't make reports because who does it go to? It just goes to the police. Um, if this is to determine that racism is a problem within the context of policing, I've got a whole bunch of scholars that I know who I could just put you in touch with, or you can just search that. We know that it's an issue. Um, so the question is, how do we, is this for determining what community-based solutions might look like on the path to defunding, disarming, and disbanding the police? 
then that's something that I would love to be a part of. And I think a lot of other citizens would too. Um, but if this is just to reinforce and to make another report or to push off actual action, uh, we have a problem. And I wanna echo what um, Councillor Maori already brought up um, in a previous meeting, which is what are the teeth that this commission has? What is it bound to do? Are there any agreements that the city and the mayor need to make um, based on the recommendations of the council? Um, because these are the things that are gonna shape what it actually does. I yield the rest of my time. Thank you. Next is Richard Hendrick. Oops. You, oh, sorry, try again, unmute. There you go. Unmuted? Yes, you're okay. unmuted, you're good. Good, I'm, I'm the unmuted guy. I have always a problem with the Zoom thing. Every time I come to a meet, I, Richard Hendrick, 30 Main Street, Northampton. Um, thanks for the opportunity once again to speak. I will be as brief as I possibly can. Every time I come to a meeting, I, I learn something new. Um, I came to the meeting primarily tonight to find out what the scope of the of the vision of selecting folks would be because I I'm initially was very interested in coming on board with that. Again, I'm a clinical social worker. I've worked on the streets and shelters for some 25 years. And, I'm, I'm known for the work that I do. And so a lot of folks said, this is something you should probably put, you know, be a part of. And, and, and I, I, I value the participation and I value this, this kind of process. And I value what you folks have been doing. And I don't envy your position of the many, many hours that you've been doing and the good work that you've been doing. But I, I again, once, once hear this resounding sort of clarion call that, that it's, it's just not it's, it's not at the right place right now. And yet I, I put myself in your shoes and say, well, you gotta keep going and you gotta, you gotta start somewhere. But there seems just to be a lot of people who think that um, really the mayor has too many people. I hear that argument. Um, so, um, and, and so, so I think maybe that should be revisited. Maybe what I would like to see, I guess my vision is that the, really the council is sort of its sort of it's the, the main body, if not the exclusive body in my vision, you know, that you're, you're meeting together, you're talking together, you're, you're, you're coming up with your own sort of parameters of things. And, and, and then maybe you're going to a larger group of people to get some more input and that kind of thing. Right now, it just seems to be just unbalanced. And I, I, I'm questioning, you know, when you sent, put out your guidelines, even if I were to, you know, meet whatever requirements you're doing, whether I would want to come on board with the process that is, that is kind thank of looking like this at, the, at this point. So thank you. Thank you for listening to me and thanks for your good work. Thank you. Okay, hold on, I was getting some background noise. Um, Next is Veronica. Still muted. Hi, my name is Veronica Douglas. I live in Ward 3 of Northampton. Um, I want to keep this short. I am not in support of this commission. Um, you've heard hours and hours and hours of testimony. You've heard from people who've experienced police brutality in this town. I don't know what else the commission could say. You've heard academic studies, you've heard people sing, you've heard so much, you've heard hours more of testimony, who knows how many hours of research went into that. We aren't being paid to be here, unlike you all. What could a commission possibly come up with that you haven't heard? Furthermore, all they could do is make a recommendation. That's not enough. There is so much that you all could be doing that isn't within your power. And if you really care, you will take those steps, things like ending school resource officers, ending cop link, ending any and all ICE collaboration. Those are real steps you can take that show that you have been listening to the people. And we will keep coming. This commission won't slow us down. We are here and we are angry. I also just want to draw your attention to something that was in the Daily Hampshire Gazette, I believe yesterday. Um, 
the Northampton police just spent $26,000 on overtime to bring in at least 63 cops from other towns. That's not even including the state police. How many people could $26,000 protect if we bought PPE? What could that do for schools? What could that do for housing? That is unbelievable that that is being spent to just drag in people from other towns to stand and stare at us, to bring in police dogs for peaceful protesters. There were children there and Northampton is spending its money to terrify and traumatize those children. This is unacceptable and shows that Northampton PD has way too much money and you should cut the budget more. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Bo. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Bo Clark, and I live in Hadley, uh, but I was born and raised in Northampton, and I work in downtown Northampton. I want to speak on behalf of the Mayor's Joint Commission today. Uh, first off, I would like to state that this is this whole process has been procedurally vague, and counselors I spoke to were not sure if there would be a vote or not today, um, and I would love to see this cleared up. Secondly, I would like to say that this commission posed by, proposed by the mayor and Councillor Shara has too much influence from the mayor and would likely rely on working through City Hall to make administrative change. We clearly asked for legal legislative power, like we couldn't have been more clear in that. Um, this commission is not nearly good enough and I ask you to vote against it when the time comes, unsure of whether or not that is tonight. Uh, we don't have trust in the mayor to be involved in this process. Every step of the way, he has, without much question, supported the Northampton Police Department and Jody Casper and the police union, who I might add to mine, and I'm sure the horror of many others, including the council, has retaliated against the council's vote last week and filed two formal and baseless complaints against the council for their vote to cut the police department. We have not heard any public acknowledgement from the mayor about, number one, the use of pepper spray on a minor at the protest. Number two, the excessive police presence at the second protest for which we are paying $26,000 to neighboring departments. Number three, the standing of Robert Powers and if any investigation is taking place. We are demanding the public, your constituents and council, I ask you demand with us that the mayor acknowledge these statements and concerns. To say we don't trust the mayor going forward being involved in this process is an understatement. We're asking you to, Mr. Mayor, to stop using conflict, stop collaborating with ICE. If you think that we will spring for a commission with no jurisdiction or binding power, you're wrong. If you think that we will accept a board built on reformist technique, which has been tried and failed, you're wrong. If you think that we can go behind some back door and cook up some undemocratic committee for reform when half of it is compromised of your personal picks and the rest applications, you're wrong, Mr. Mayor and Councillor Shara. If you think that we don't see the money and energy suck that these committees are, you're wrong. If you think that we don't see that your actions put the safety of Northampton's people directly in jeopardy, you're wrong. If you think that we will settle for anything less than abolition of the Northampton police force, you are all wrong. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Ashwin. Hello, my name is Ashwin Ravi Kumar and I live in Amherst. I have a letter dated July 1st, 2020, addressed to the children of Karen Foster. Dear children, I heard that you were afraid by our presence at your house the other day, so I wanted to explain. I believe that almost everyone is good and that no one is disposable, but I wanna tell you about a bad man, an evil man named Sheriff Joe Arpaio. Sheriff Joe lives in Arizona and he hurts people bad. He steals babies from their mamas and puts them in cages. He beats people, makes them hurt so bad that they wish they weren't even alive. Here in Northampton, our police chief was sending cops to work with Sheriff Joe, learning his wicked tools to use against black people here, against people who maybe look like me. When we asked to defund the police to stop this madness, the chief of police said that it would be impossible, that it would make us less safe, that a civilian oversight committee with no power would be enough. Everyone knew the chief was lying, and so we begged your mom, we pleaded with her to stand with us, to protect us from this violence. It breaks my heart to tell you that when the moment came, she betrayed our trust and stood with the police and with Sheriff Joe. She told us that part of why she did that is because you, her children, were afraid of us. I'm telling you this because I want you to be better and to stand on the right side of history when your time comes. Karen, there's another letter, another letter that describes a different future, a different past, where you're a hero, 
where you made the right choice even when it was hard, where you stood with us and protected us, where you worked with us to build a better world. Which side are you on, Karen? Next is Rowan. Rowan Lupton, Florence Ward 6, she, they. Um, I echo the community agreement that this commission is a transparent attempt by the mayor to pretend that action is being taken and try to tamp down his and your constituents organizing. The mayor has shown himself to be in the pocket of Jody Casper and the police union, and we must push back against him as long as he remains in office. And that means not accepting a commission, which the mayor controls two fifths of off the bat. In reference to the union's complaints against the council, these are the actions of an animal backed into a corner. It shows that they recognize the power we hold and are responding the only way that the police know by threatening everybody and anybody who holds power and does not kneel to them. We stand with you, the city council, against the police union. One action that could be taken is to stop the NPD from using CopLink as it shares information with ICE, which is in direct odds with Northampton's public status as a sanctuary city. This would be trivial to implement as an executive order and all members of city council invested in immigration justice should be working with us to pressure the mayor to take this one tiny step toward alignment with our progressive public presentation. Finally, I would like to remind Councillor Shiara that tone policing is a phobic against minority communities who communicate with different conversational norms than WASP expectations of politeness. Removing attendees from a public meeting because they speak in a way that you don't like is unconscionable. I yield my time. Thank you. Next is Ezekiel Baskin. Hi. Um, I have three thoughts. Um, first, around the commission, if you move forward with that, um, I agree there should be less mayoral appointments percentage wise. I think that the commission would need fundamental assumptions and goals and a scope as was brought up previously. I think that there's, it's too broad, it's studying too much. Um, it could be focused on how are we going to implement reallocation and imagining alternatives to policing. I think it could be focused from an assumption that we're trying to reduce the numbers, but that's not in the document um, as it stands right now. Also, recommendation is really vague. Um, could there be some sort of guarantee that proposals from the commission will get a vote on the city council um, as opposed to just sort of being recommended into the ether? Um, second, I want to talk about something that can happen while the commission is working, if it decides to be sort of brought into being, which is that the list of demands is really wonderful. And lots of those demands could be formed into legislation and voted on in your next regular meeting and the meeting after that and the meeting after that. Like the work of dismantling the police department can happen in adjacent at the same time as the commission's work. And we don't need to wait until the commission creates a report to move more. There are lots of concrete actions that can happen right now. Um, and you have the power to do those. And I hope you will. Um, lastly, I did just want to speak um, to these open meeting law complaints, um, which are just ridiculous, unfounded, they're, they're just nonsensical and their actions coming from a place of fear. And I want to, I'm sorry that the police union is doing that. I think it's ridiculous. I think it's underhanded. And I think that they're trying to twist the law to scare you. And I hope they will stop because it's terrible. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Next, it just says DSA line 13. Hi, my name is Michaela Brangan. I live in Ward 3 in Northampton, and I'm also the co-chair of the Pioneer Valley DSA, which is a political organization that covers Franklin, Hamden, and Hampshire County. Um, I think that you haven't been listening. Um, what people want is more self-governance 
and more democracy. Um, it seems as if this commission is like so many other commissions designed to depoliticize and technocratize this moment in order to calm people down. Um, it seems as though it's being used to give cover to um, inaction or backroom deals prospectively saying we have made a commission, we have listened to the experts. In my view, this needs to be the other way around. People are here, they're demanding to be heard. They're, as other people have pointed out, very well researched um, and know a lot. I mean, we live in the five college region. There are plenty of people, including uh, colleagues of mine, and I work in academia, who have presented people with lots of information. Um, it's all on record. And I believe that people who are coming to these meetings and participating would be excellent candidates to participate in these. And frankly, as other people have um, put very well, um, the expertise of what it means to be policed in this city ought to be among those who are the most policed in this city. And they are perfectly capable, more so than those who would, as one person put it, come up with some options to present to the community in order for us to select them. Um, that's all I wanted to say. Um, this is fundamentally a demand for self-government and um, a fundamental change transformation in the way that police power of the city is um, being run. And I believe that if you were to committify this or commissionify this, it would um, kill momentum. And that's not what I wanna see doing. This is in no way a comment um, to say that people won't keep organizing past this commission and continue to fight for more self-government. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Jake Carroll. Hello. Hi. Um, I'm Jake Carroll. I live in Ward 3. Um, I just want to echo basically what most uh, people here have been saying, which is that this commission is ultimately pointless. And as people have said, it's here to try to appease us to um, get us to move on with our lives as if this is just some little moment, this little blip, but it is not. It's not going to go away. We're not going to go away. Um, our demands have been pretty clear from the beginning, which is to defund the police. And we've already started that work with the 10% cut, which was ultimately not enough, but it was the first step. Um, I think we need to continue working in that direction and reinvesting in our city and other areas. I don't think that this commission will ultimately come up with much um, that has not already been elucidated in these meetings. Um, we've heard hours and hours and hours and hours of testimony, which has been researched. Um, if Karen had attended those meetings, she would have heard this research and she would know that we already have the numbers to back us up. Um, if we, I mean, just, just think about the $26,000 that they spent the other day on that ridiculous show at the protest, which was ultimately a completely peaceful protest and nothing happened. Um, how long could we have housed temporarily during the COVID pandemic, the houseless community in Northampton with that money? That is just egregious to me. Um, and the way that this, the uh, counselors in this town keep telling us to, well, we've got to take it slow. We've got, we've got to think this through. We've got to do this. We've got to do that. That it is the curse of liberalism. It is, it is how nothing gets happened. When the right wing wants to take away people's rights and throw them in cages, they don't come up with a commission to do it. They just do it. Okay. And so we've got people here telling you what to do. Just do it. Okay. Um, I also want to address Jim, John, excuse me, John Thorpe. Um, as a parole officer, I do kind of question how he can be included on conversations on policing and funding the policing when ultimately his career is dependent upon policing and people being thrown in jail. That just seems a little bit suspect to me. And I think it's something we should look into going forward. Um, also, Karen, shut up with your silent majority. We're not talking about Nixon politics here. Right. You I yield my time. Do that. Next is Ruth Alan. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. My name is Ruth Elon. I live in Hatfield 
And I'm here to say that it is a brazen insult to the people of Northampton and surrounding areas to propose a commission to quote unquote plan to defund the police when one, you've already had a 10 point immediate action plan to defund the police given to you at the June 6th protest read by others in this meeting and published in the shoestring, shouts out to the shoestring too. You've already had multiple civil rights and excessive force complaints filed against the department across multiple decades. And three, you have had hundreds of people directly reporting to you in these very meetings for hours and thousands in public protest that the Northampton police is an irredeemable racist institution, that they have been personally violently harmed time and time again by the NPD, and that the NPD have systemically failed to prevent community violence. I've lived here for six years and I've yet to meet a single person who has been helped by the NPD. What I've seen instead is a black friend of mine asking me to drive them less than a mile between workplaces to avoid repetitive racial profiling and potentially lethal harassment by the NPD. A trans friend of mine being stopped and derided every two weeks by the NPD for the excuse of being a student with out of state plates. The NPD assaulting and repeatedly harassing my friends at and inside their homes. The NPD harassing and assaulting houseless people at the bequest of transient and extremely affluent small business owners in downtown Northampton. The NPD in the last month, pepper sparing teenagers and threatening protests with barking dogs and, in co and continuously manufacturing petty crime out of boredom for any minor moving and traffic violations they witness, or to quote still active police officer Robert Powers, ethnic vehicle or passenger characteristics. You don't need a study or a commission to face the stark reality that the NPD is a violent, unpredictable, racist paramilitary that in no way fulfills a com community safety role and poses an active threat to the broader community. Defund the NPD, abolish the police, do not vote to form a commission. I yield my time. Thank you. Next is Faith. Hi. Hi. Um, my name is Faith Gregory. I live in Ward 1. Um, I want to say one thing that's a little more scripted and then one thing that's a little less scripted. Um, I'm against a commission that is just lip service to a white supremacist system, in action, uh, system of inaction. We need something that works to defund the police and protect black, indigenous, and other people of color's lives. And we need to work towards abolishing the Northampton Police Department, uh, not just do a year long study, which is something that can be ignored once recommendations are made. And on a more anecdotal note, um, when we were doing the rally um, not too long ago, I was uh, in charge of setting up the, the snacks and uh, you know, helping with the other resources that we were handing out to uh, protesters who showed up. And I think the most striking thing that, you know, happened to me during that sort of beginning period of time while we were setting up is uh, the amount of people that came up to the stand and requested that we give them food or hand sanitizer or masks that didn't have access to those things. And we were, you know, just happened to be there and happened to have those things for free. And it really spoke to me personally to the fact that we're not investing our resources where they need to be invested and that we really need to focus on taking care of the people in our community and not, not policing them. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next, I'm gonna go to Jasmine Sinclair, who's having trouble, now has her hand up, but was having trouble getting it up. So, um, let me hold up, did that work? Jasmine. Oh, hello. Hi, you're unmuted okay. now. You can go. Okay, cool. Hi, my name is Jasmine Sinclair. Um, I just first wanted to say that I echo all of the testimony that's been being uh, shared here and at every one of the other um, committee, budget, whatever these are hearings. I just want to say that I strongly urge the council to look at the committee that they're creating and think critically about how they're going to be wasting the time of the citizens of Northampton and the money that should be going to the city. If you're going to create a commission or a committee to spend time like evaluating things or researching or whatever you plan to do with the committee, I suggest that you make the committee about planning and re-envisioning what our city will look like without the police and to listen to the testimony that everyone is giving you. 
I know that people are afraid of change and I know that you all wanna make a decision with a plan. So why not use this space to make a plan in a commission and then put it into action? We want action. That's what we want. And I want you to seriously think about how this makes you, the council look, as well as the mayor, by not listening or not giving us the light of day when people are giving you countless testimonies about abolishing the police. And it will be remembered. It's something that come voting time next year will be remembered. I yield my time. Thank you. Next is Tadea Martin Gonzalez. Uh, hey everyone, um, today I'm writing Dollars Ward 6, uh, she, her pronouns. Uh, I just want to echo everything that everyone else is saying um, about just the absolute joke that this commission is, um, you know, from the, the lack of power that it has to the real transparency issues that any um, application-based system would present um, where applicants are heard behind closed doors uh, by the exact people they're trying to speak out against. Um, clearly the people speaking out are not gonna get through. Um, I also just want to point something out in the words of the mayor. Um, so the mayor himself said that this council is for reform. Um, that is not what all these people on um, these meetings have been calling for. Um, in the words of Councillor Dwight as well, reformed or progressive policing is still policing. Um, reformed policing will still harm lives. Um, there's no reform that would prevent the response um, to the protest several weeks ago. Um, that overtime pay, um, that $26,000, um, could still be charged by any reformed police force. And um, I mean, several people have testified as to where that money could go. Um, just speaking personally, um, I am a member of the statewide return to school working group um, and seeing through all of the different expenses that schools are going to have to be going through um, and the supports that aren't going to be there from the state, I am vastly concerned about what our schools will be looking like next year. Um, I pointed out on a previous call um, that students are going to be forced to pay for advanced classes themselves at local community colleges. Um, $26,000 would be more than enough um, to fund that uh, for all students, not just those on free and reduced lunch. Um, as of right now, the suggestion is that um, those on free or reduced lunch will get um, one class paid for. Um, that's simply not enough. Um, I know many students take up to five to six advanced classes per year. So um, just wanna bring that up uh, again, another, there are just so many ways in which um, the police suck um, useless money from our community um, and I'm just just appalled that, that this is your solution to that so um, thank you I call on the council to reject the proposed committee and I yield to my time thank you next is Jeff Hobbs Hello, uh, this is Jeff Hobbs from Hatfield, Massachusetts. Uh, the Northampton Police Department's open data portal publicly available at NorthamptonPD.com and created as part of the Obama administration's police data initiative has not been updated since it was created in 2016. This data with mostly, mostly spreadsheets which enumerate arrests, major crimes, and other meaningful police activity is hugely important for police transparency and incredibly useful for the public and the press to understand the workload and overall priorities and direction of the Northampton Police Department. The areas of police activity detailed currently on the portal are a good start, but it goes without saying that data that is four years old with no sign of hope or hope of update is useless to everyone. There are 10 individuals listed on the open data portal webpage as the open data team, including four employees specifically of the Northampton Police Department were involved in 2016 for the initial and apparently single update to the portal. Why have none of these people found the time to update the data in the past four years? Will the police, will Chief of Police Jody Casper pledge to update this data and keep it updated for the benefit of all? Thanks for your attention and yield my time. Thank you. Next is Elisa Klein. Okay. 
Uh, Elisa, did that work? Can you hear me? Oh, now I can. Yes. Good evening. This is Elisa Klein from Leeds. I'd like to um, take this in a slightly different direction than previous speakers, but I do want to say that I'm really moved by and totally in support of all of the previous speakers. Um, I'd say with the exception of the one uh, speaker who spoke about her support of the NPD. Um, I'm concerned about how this proposed commission came about. I heard on a number of occasions, Councillor Shara say that she was tasked with this by the council uh, to, to meet with the mayor and come up with a plan. I would really love that revisited. I'm not sure that that process um, really unfolded in that way. And I would like the council to take a look at that and really, um, take its power in making a decision about whether or not this commission, this proposed commission is the right thing to do. I think that collaboration sounds like a good idea, but sometimes it's not the right thing to do, um, particularly when, when uh, one of the parties is clearly an advocate for the body that you're supposed to be examining and making decisions about. Um, a real example of this is the council's vote to ban municipal surveillance cams a few years ago. Um, which the mayor actually vetoed. And there are many other examples of the mayor's support for the NPD that other speakers have spoken about. I think that sometimes the checks and balances of different branches of government need to be emphasized. In this case, the council needs to embrace its power and to deliberate without the mayor, I think. I think the council really needs to determine the legislative ways that um, that can create true community safety. I do think a select committee, um, as per the suggestion, uh, the motion by uh, councilors Jarrett and Maori, is a tool for the council. Um, I know how complex these, these things are. And to be clear, I don't mean that what needs to be done is complex. I think we need to abolish institutions that essentially are the incarnation of state power um, speaking of the police, jails, prisons, but I do think that the legal machinations around how to, what the council can do, what legislative change, what structural change it can do um, are complex. And so I do think that a select committee where um, you're talking about what the legislative pieces are that you can do to actually effectuate structural change is the way for the council to go. Um, so I would really encourage you not to let go of that proposal and to go in that direction and to think again about this um, proposed joint commission. Thanks. Thank you. Next is Sangha Kang Lee. Oh, you disappeared. You're unmuted. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Um, so hi, my name is Sangha Kongle. Um, I live in Ward 1. Um, I understand that the council wants to have specific alternatives in place before instituting cuts to the NPD, but I will echo uh, most people who spoke before me in saying that this is not the best way to do that learning. Um, first, I want to emphasize that a commission to research police reform is not a replacement for immediate and significant defunding and disarming. In terms of alternatives, black organizers have been telling us that we need to defund the police for decades. And there is an abundance of easily accessible information about how and why. Um, I would point the commission to the Black Visions Collective, uh, Reclaim the Block and our own 10 demands that came out of protests here in Northampton. Um, each of you does have the ability to lean on these demands and do whatever community research you need to do to figure out what alternatives exist, how much funding they will be, require. Um, I've worked in state government for a legislator of color and I know a quote, progressive government and police department is not an indicator that change will be possible through collaborative institutional channels. Um, so we need urgency and a commitment to do the uncomfortable in this moment. Um, second, police review commissions have existed since the 1980s in some form, and they don't work. 
Um, when these commissions do not have the legal power to conduct fully in independent investigations of police misconduct, to subpoena officers, to issue recommendations that have binding legal consequences for departments and or officials that fail to act, they are ineffective at holding officers accountable or enacting the kind of meaningful change that you have committed to. Um, so if the purpose of this commission is just to inform council members what the right thing to do is, um, I think that can be easily achieved in much more direct, immediate ways. Um, and if you all envision a broader role for the commission, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, it has to be equipped with binding legal um, and punitive power. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next is Bob von Ferdinand, and then it's cut off. I think it's Wilson, maybe. Hi, can you hear and see me? Yes. OK, great. Um, I, I want to address uh, the full council first, and I have uh, some specific uh, council members I'd like to speak to. For the full council, uh, I want to echo what everyone has said about the commission. Uh, if you are going to do a commission, a 6-9 split with uh, the mayor's office getting six choices is not acceptable. Uh, how about something like a 3-3-9 split where nine is chosen by some means other than appointment? Um, open that up in a way to the community. Now, I know that you are bound by bylaws, uh, charters, and rules, so get as creative as possible to still work within those bylaws to open this up to have real community representation if you're going to do this. Eight of 15 is not enough for having that be the portion of folks who are from affected populations. That I think that's kind of anemic. Um, and it needs to have teeth. Again, back to, I understand there's a city charter, there's the, the, the council is, has certain rules they have to work on. Um, please do your homework, find a way to have something have teeth uh, that the community gets to have a say in. Um, one thing I, I hasn't been mentioned yet is even if we manage to get the Northampton Police Department disarmed, we still have to limit collaboration with neighboring municipalities and the state police. There's very little to take guns away from Northampton police officers to have them be able at a moment's notice call in a state police officer uh, who is armed. Um, Bill Dwight, specific one to you. You mentioned three uh, black indigenous or people of color who were recent department hires. Uh, I, I challenge you and please respond to this later if you get a chance to put pressure on the mayor to make sure that the 10% reduction that was approved does not result in us losing those sorely needed non-white, non-male officers. Um, Councilor Thorpe, please explain to everyone on the call why you've not recused yourself, being that you are a probation officer. Um, you know, I know of at least one trans uh, black resident who for whom John Thorpe is a probation officer who expressed clearly that any process involving you, John, uh, that has to do with a vote on the police policing uh, is just cannot be fair. Uh, and I'd like you to address that personally. I challenge you to do that. And I don't know if the mayor and Chief Casper are on the call, but we really want to hear the mayor address Robert Powers and the racial profiling that he has been accused of doing and teaching to other officers. Yay for shoestring on this again. Uh, please explain why this officer was promoted after being known that he racially profiled drivers and taught others to do so, and why he's still on our police force making over $100,000 a year. Um, and uh, I think that's it. Oh, they, also, I can, I can echo that about the complaint process. The complaint forms themselves are years old that are on the Northampton Police Department uh, website. Um, I didn't look at the database access myself, but I did look at the actual complaint forms. And they're, they're really out of date. That, it's unacceptable and needs to be addressed immediately. If that's it, I, I yield the rest of my time. There's no time. Thank you. Um, next is Carol Toll Oppenheim. Can you hear me? Yes. OK. Can you see me? No. But no we can way. hear you. And I'm trying to I'm trying to start the video, but it's not coming. I here see if that something pops up. Did that work? Just feel free to start talking now. Okay, I'm. We can hear time. you. There, oh, we now we can see you. Okay, there I am. 
So I hear, I'm listening to people who are very upset about the power of the mayor. I'm, I'm very unhappy that the, the plan to have this commission immediately assumed it was, you know, going to be um, the council and the mayor. The mayor is the executive branch. The council is a legislative branch. There is an inherent tension, or should be, between the two, and it would make sense that the um, that the council would have its own meeting and come up with its own results, and then negotiate with the mayor. Um, and given that Jody Casper reports to the mayor, to some extent, we recognize that he represents her interests. I think that people, I think a lot of people mentioned the charters and oh, work within the charters. Maybe people really need to know about the charter. The ACLU lawyer in town, Bill Newman has written in the Gazette about this, that he's very concerned that the charter gives too much power to the mayor and is undermining real democracy in Northampton. And my understanding is that the Charter Commission for the new charter has not been completed, but I'm not 100% sure. I hope it's not, because really, th that's an issue. The structure of government in our town informs the kinds of powers that the council and the mayor have. And a lot of what people are frustrated about, they think that they can just say, well, please make it different. Well, that's like going to the federal government saying, please make it different. And we're all appalled at the erosion of the separate boundaries of units of government. We have that problem here in Northampton. And I realize we're focusing on a very short-term thing, but the container in which this government, this city government works, it behooves all activists who are interested in making changes to understand the rules of the road. How much time do I have left? You have about 20 seconds. Oh, okay. Well, the human, the Human Rights Commission, it turns out in the ordinance, reports at, serves at the pleasure of the mayor. Um, that's something of concern. I think that we do really need to be looking into the relationship with citizens commissions and the city council and the mayor and question them. I'm done. Thank you. Oh, you rang my bell. Okay. Yeah, thank you. I didn't hear it. Hi. Okay, next is Amy Bookbinder. Amy, you're unmuted. Okay. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Unmuted. Absolutely. Okay, um, can you hear me? Yes, yes, we're in a loop somehow. Okay, Amy Bookbind. Absolutely. Amy, do you have two devices on? Yes, yes, we're in a loop somehow. All right, um, I'm Amy Bookbinder in Ward 7. You can still hear me? Yes. I'm still learning about Zoom too, obviously. Um, so, I want to echo what uh, all have said about the commission, and I am in favor of a select committee, or at least I'm open to that. I'm against a commission. So I'm not going to repeat all the great things that were said. I'm going to do something else. I want to talk about some things that I think need to happen right now before you launch into a discussion about the commission. I am demanding that you stop excluding the public on this discussion about racism or any ongoing ones by putting caps on our individual speaking time or caps on the public comment period time. I've been watching city council for 40 years and I've never seen anything like it. And I'm quite upset about it. And frankly, we're discussing racism and you're doing this now and I think it's racist. My second point is that it has been reported that several people of color who have spoken out uh, for defunding or abolishing our police are right now 
being followed by the police and so are their friends. So before you launch into a discussion about a commission, I want the mayor, the city council, and the chief of police to tell us what you're going to do to stop that right now and to hold those responsible accountable. And my final comment is that up until these discussions, I've been in favor of reforming the police. I got to say that hearing all the stories by the brave people who have spoken about how abuse by the police continues. I'm now not a reformist, but someone who believes that reform isn't working and can't work, and I'm for abolishing the police. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next is Amy Francis. Amy? Yep, okay, great. Hi, um, I just, I wanna echo everything that's been said, particularly Ezekiel, Faith, Tejada, Alyssa, Bob Von um, Fernand, and Amy Bookbinder. Um, I'm echoing everything that they said, and I'd like you to please listen to the people who live here. I'm from Word 4, Amy Francis. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next is Anne Fine. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, so my name is Anne Fine. I live in Ward 4. And um, I want to say that um, this whole process has been sort of eye opening for me. Um, and it's actually, I think, radicalized me. I'm in my 60s. I'm white. I have a view until I think what's so important is that we listen to all the people who have spoken because they're indicating this, the, the truth about sort of the history of America and how we have to, I too, before the beginning of, um, until probably all of this Black Lives Matter movement and the murder of George Floyd and watching the response in our supposedly progressive town on how demonstrators have been treated. And um, I'm struck by the speakers the vast majority of whom are like the age of my children who are adamant that they want a different way for Northampton's government to manage the economic struggles and health issues of our community. A police force that has become too large and too weaponized is seen not as a quote service unquote, but as a way to enforce a repressive and racist social order. The city could give funding and authority to social workers shelters for victims of domestic violence, addiction counselors, on and on. And I just sort of feel by forming another commission, which it doesn't, you know, you can just see throughout all of the commissions that have been started in this country to examine whenever there've been uprisings, that nothing changes. And I guess I feel like maybe, you know, I have some experience to say, I don't want this movement to be suppressed like every other movement in my lifetime. So I hope that the council will, um, you know, seize this opportunity. If not now, when? And thank you. Thank you. Don't kick the can down the road. Next is Travis Wilmont. Wilmot. that work? Travis? Sorry, it wasn't letting me unmute at first. Okay. Uh, Travis Wilmot, Ward 3. I want to echo the people before me who have said that this is a very old conversation. Our country was founded on a revolt against law enforcement. Uh, and abolition was discussed on national TV many decades ago. <clears throat> but 2020 is not 1968. Read the polls if you don't believe me. Roughly 70% of the public supported the police in 68. 
In 2020, roughly 70% of the public opposes the police. Remember that. This is what an activist told William Buckley on national TV in 1962 when questioned about his attitude. What in the ideal society are the consequences or ought to be the consequences of such an attitude as, as, as you take? In an ideal society, uh, my attitude would be unnecessary. Uh, an ideal society would uh, be dead. All the pigs would uh, be extinct. Yeah. Uh, people would no longer people would no longer be uh, in a position to function in a pig-like manner. So therefore, the ideal society is really one uh, in which your uh, ideals are, are dominate, even if I, it I requires that, uh, the, the... I don't think that would be accurate. I think that an ideal society would be one in which all people uh, would have a chance to bring their ideas to bear on the social process, yeah. and not to be subjected to the dictation of any particular person or any particular group of people. But now, as I understand it, um, you have been rather impatient with people who fancy themselves as, as struggling to uh, help the cause of the black people. I see that you recently said about Julian Bond that, quote, he is becoming a pig and might thus end up being barbecued, barbecued with the rest of the pigs. Suppose we start by discussing what it is about Julian Bond that makes you call him a pig. Well, it's, it's a question of symmetry. Um, there are always critical differences uh, within any group or with any particular spectrum of the political scene. Uh, just as you yourself uh, uh, attack people and uh, cut them up in your magazine and in your program, uh, this is uh, legitimate also in our part of the spectrum. Uh, the things that we feel are constructive, uh, there are uh, tactics and uh, approaches that we feel are detrimental to the cause. Uh, we feel that Julian Bond, as a member of the Democratic Party, part and parcel of the machinery of oppression. We feel that the Democratic Party and the Republican Party are criminal conspiracies against the people. And we feel that anyone who affiliates with them, supports them, speaks good about them, uh, writes good about them, are uh, aiding and abetting this uh, criminality. Yeah. Now, um, how, how would you uh, agree to test your position? That is to say, is there any test to which you would be willing to submit it on the basis of the time? Shame on you, Jim Nash. Next is Carl Tong. Hey, everyone. Um, I can't really understand you. I'm, I'm really sorry. We can't understand. Your, your sound isn't coming through clearly. I don't know if there's anything you do, can do, but we can't understand anything you're saying. Not really, although I could figure out that you were saying, is that better? Uh, I'm really sorry. I can't actually, and you're muted. I don't even know how those sounds are happening right now because you muted yourself. So, um, uh, get to me in oh we think maybe you said you'll call back get to me in the chat if you can and i will go right to you when you're back and you think that it'll work okay um next it, it just is action no commission you on mute okay, okay. Um, your name and your city or town of residence. So I'm Karen Baker, Ward 4. And I just organized these thoughts. We'll see how I do. Um, so I would say what we need is a process for action, not a commission. We all know what appointed commissions lead to. Uh, and there have been many over many years in many parts of the country, and they haven't really led to anything. Um, 
the action that we need is really to transfer responsibilities from the police elsewhere. Uh, many people today are looking with fresh eyes as what the, at what the police do and what's actually necessary in what they do. And other people, of course, have had these questions all along. But at this point, I think many things are obvious to most people. Um, so I would like the council to just look at what the police do. And a previous speaker actually spoke to this. Just take the logical actions yourselves, no commission needed. And I'll list some examples, but I think it's obvious there could be many more. So one thing, um, from what I understand, a major responsibility of the police is dealing with traffic. And um, why do we need somebody with a weapon to do that? Uh, create a force of people who monitors traffic, uh, deals with traffic violations, goes to traffic accidents. Nobody needs a gun to do that. Uh, and then basically what I'm suggesting is transfer responsibilities to another group of people and then cut the police force and the funding to it accordingly. Another example, crisis intervention, conflict intervention, don't need cops for that. In fact, bringing a weapon to a scene where there's already conflict and crisis uh, is probably a bad idea. Um, so instead, figure out how to create a group of people who has training in conflict intervention and negotiation, um, put them on that work. Uh, as far as uh, another thing that I think the police spend a lot of time doing is dealing with people who don't have houses. Uh, what do they have to offer people without houses? Instead, um, take the money that we save from police not having to worry about them, fewer police, transfer the responsibility to a group that actually can do substantial things to help people without houses. And uh, while you're at it, take some of that money and figure out how to get more housing to people. Um, so basically, I think the point is made. We need action. Uh, just step by step, figure out how to take responsibility away from the police when they're not really suited to it anyway, and put the money someplace else and cut the police force accordingly. The solutions are not difficult. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay. Carl is on the phone, but let's see. Carl, is this on the phone or is this still the computer? Um, this is me on my phone. Can you hear me better? That works. Yep, that works. Wonderful. Um, thank you. Um, sorry, my Chromebook hates Zoom. Um, so um, I think something that a lot of folks have touched on tonight. Oh, I'm, I'm Carl Tong. Um, I live in East Hampton and I've worked in Northampton for um, two years previously um, and I spend a lot of time there. Um, so. Um, I think something important that like a lot of folks have touched on tonight um, and that I want to talk about is like white comfort. Um, and that kind of is what this commission feels like. It feels like a, a comfortable place for the city council to be. Um, comfort through lack of commitment, through fear of changes to the status quo. Um, and I do want to reference Karen Foster directly um, and just like hope that she really understands um, like the historical significance of her as a white woman saying publicly that she was afraid of and also teaching her children in a way to be afraid of a nonviolent, explicitly nonviolent musical protest. Um, and like passing those fears down onto like two children who are going to grow up to be white adults and might be teachers, civil servants, social workers. And like, that's really, I think representative of like a lot of the issues that we're talking about. Um, and to the mem white members of the city council, I would ask them what experiences you have that make you uncomfortable with the 50% changes that are being recommended and how many of those experiences happened solely because you're white. Um, and I want to echo a point I think Maori was kind of making during um, the last meeting, which is like, we don't know what these changes will look like, but we know the public right, the, the police right now aren't serving the public. And we don't know that continuing to fund the police at 90% or 50%, um, we are, like, if, if funding police continuing at 90% instead of 50% will keep folks safer. We don't know, it just makes folks more comfortable. Um, so I think I would just like uh, encourage city council to um, remind themselves um, to make uncomfortable changes um, and, and it, yeah that's it I yield my time thank you next it 
just says iPhone. Hi there. Hi. Um, my name is Daniela Medeo. I live in Ward 3. That's with you, Councillor Nash. Um, one, I agree with all of the previous sentiments expressed by my, my fellow constituents with the exception of Karen Sullivan's. Two, I object to language in the proposal that's posted online in today's meeting agenda, which says that there's, which um, uses the language, uses the word killing. Um, there's a big difference between the word killing and murder. So I would encourage you all to take a look at that and revise it accordingly. Three, the language in the proposal also suggests that the commission will disband in March, 2021 in time for the budget review for the next fiscal year. I would encourage the council to hear feedback from your constituents specifically regarding the reformation of the scope and composition of this group, which I won't reiterate, um, and B, its tenure, which I haven't heard discussed yet. This should be um, a permanent commission, which is designed in a scaffolded approach in order to continue its work and grow so that it can be empowered to continue its work which would include, um, it should also include having a budget. Like there's no way that it should end, the work should end March, 2021. So please take a look at that language revised and make sure that it's clear that it's a permanent commission. And I would consider um, giving this commission a budget so they can do their work, which if possible could include a full-time benefited staffer. That would be great. And if not, maybe a part-time staffer. And again, this could all be incorporated into a scaffolded approach. Um, four, thank you again to the shoestring for making this meeting accessible. Council members, please, please, please take note. Um, our local activists and organizers are doing more to make the political process accessible than you are. That's not okay. I need you all to step it up. It's really a pain to keep looking at the city's website. Um, can I get a quick hand up or thumbs up or clap or something in the chat if you've struggled with the city's website from folks? All right, I'm assuming it's a few of you. Um, and can I get another one if you are like, if you consider yourself computer li literate and still struggle? Um, this is an accessibility issue. I'm not even gonna ask if the stuff that's online is in all text, but please take note. Um, counselors, if you don't have time to do this level of work and oversight, I know it's a lot. I know that you all have other jobs and responsibilities and you're not getting paid enough. I would encourage you as some of my predecessors have asked to take a look at the city charter and make your positions full time and rebalance the power. Five, my comments specifically to council members, um, council, to, to specific council members, Councillor Nash, I'm really disappointed in you. I am disappointed in you. Word three is disappointed in you. Please step it up. Um, council member Quinlan, thanks for your advocacy regarding the patrol unit at the waste transfer station. I really appreciate you taking a stand on that. And council members Mayori and Jarrett, thank you all for stepping up with advocacy and bravery as well. Um, and then finally, to the council, please be brave and be a little bit more creative. We will support you. You've got 156 people on this call. It's 90 degrees in the middle of summer. We will support you. Please be brave and step it up with your creativity. To my neighbors on this call, I know I'm not supposed to talk to you because of open meeting rule, but when it's safe, let's get together. I'm really grateful to you all and inspired by you. I it's hope nice. that our counselors and mayors Thank will follow you. your lead and I look forward to supporting your role in running for office. Thank you. Next is um, Jillian Love. Oh, what we the public want or need. Hi. Oh. If you were you were muted when you were still when you were talking, I think. Can you um, say your name and your city or town of residence, and then I'll start the timer. Yes, Jillian Love, Board Four. I stand in solidarity with those who have stated this commission is not what we the public want or need, not only because of the clear attempt of the mayor to maintain power in the commission through securing six of 15 appointments, as well as the lack of judiciary power or demand for action following the commission, but for the reasons I'm going to share now. And this is pulled directly from the proposal of the commission. Department size, structure, services, budget. Without a commission, members of the public have been able to discover that the city is overfunded, even in relation to other cities of similar size. Without the commission, we were able to learn that out of approximately 45 city employees who make over 100K per year, 22 of them are police. Use of force policies. Regardless of how much physical force is used by the MPD, we know that BIPOC have shared that they feel targeted, harassed, and harmed by local police. 
In addition, the police used and threatened force through their weaponized response against public protest, costing 26,000 of, of our dollars to potentially use force against the public. Recruitment. We know that the police department is not diverse. We also know that despite the police's ability to reallocate funds to reduce overtime pay, reduce pay of Jody Casper, or other overpaid officers, including the racist captain Robert Powers, in response to the 10% budget cut, they attempted to mislead the council and the public into assuming the only action they could take was remove the newest diversity hires. Training. Again, the police have made it clear that if they if they were defunded, they were, would reduce training, as if they didn't have any unnecessary riot gear or weren't paying officers for unnecessary overtime. They clearly, clearly don't have the interest of bettering themselves, and even if they did, racial justice training has also been proven ineffective. Same with body cameras. As part of a reform, mandatory body cams haven't done a damn thing to stop police from abusing their power or being held accountable, even with video evidence. Union contracts. We know that police unions do not exist under the same principle as labor unions. Labor unions are meant to protect the workers' rights. Police unions have been used to enforce the power and oppression of the police system, where murderers, abusers, rapists, and racial oppressors are continuously supported through undeserved wages, minimal to non-existent accountability from cities or judicial processes. The rest of the main bulleted points are ones in which years, if not centuries of data exist, and community organizers across this nation have attempted to address publicly. They've made those resources accessible to the public. We, the people of this city and countless member members of this nation have already done more work with more knowledge than this commission is designed to even come close to achieving. We reject the mayor's commission. Instead, we ask that the council members create a select committee designed for more input and power from the public. One where instead of enforcing the imbalance of power of both the mayor and the police, we move towards the progress we need and deserve. This nation is making a shift towards police abolition. We as a city have the opportunity to be on the right side of this historical change. Action, not commissions. I, whatever my time, thank you. Thank you. Next is Chris Landry. I'm Chris Landry of Ward 3. We have three, we have different branches of government for a reason, and we need them even when we have outstanding people in every position. This moment calls for a legislative process led by the city council and the people of Northampton, not a commission controlled by the executive branch. It's clear that the mayor's relationship with the chief and the police union keeps him from having the independent judgment we need on this issue. But that's okay. We have brilliant, caring, and progressive residents who are already dreaming of a better, safer, and healthier community. Please reject the mayor's proposal. Please insist on a select committee created by the city council. When the process is completed, the mayor, whoever she or he may be at that point, can work with the council to execute the plan. But now is the time for the people to work with our representatives on the city council to reimagine what real public safety looks like. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Lois Ahrens. Lois? Okay. You're, you're unmuted. I, I, I uh, Lois Ahrens, Ward 1. Uh, I agree with almost everything that has been said, at least for the time I've been on this call especially Lisa and the last person that spoke and, and so many others. Um, I, I am not in support of this commission. I'm in support of a select committee and I hope that that is the route that the council will take, um, which is a route uh, basically to affirm your own power. And I hope that you use it. Uh, one thing that uh, came to my attention from somebody else on this call is uh, about the complaints that have been filed against the city council by the uh, PBA, the New England PBA, uh, which we should call that. And that's what it is, not a union. Um, ironically, um, one of the complaints uh, is filed by Joshua Wallace, who is the school resource officer um, and I wonder, I mean, I'm sure it's his role as a PBA employee or officer of the PBA um, uh, to be filing this complaint, but I'm, my, I just can't help but think that he's afraid for his uh, position as uh, a school resource 
resource officer, which I hope he is, because in my mind, that's one of the first things that should go. Um, I think I'm not, I'm not surprised that the PBA has come after the council so quickly. I mean, we know that they have a lot of power, they have a lot of money, and they have the ability to hire um, a lot of lawyers. And it seems like that's what they're, they're doing. I think that they wanna make sure that this stops in Northampton, the 10%. They certainly want to make sure that the 50% will stop or any other larger amount. And I am sure, just like other kinds of, you know, control officers like guards, they know that a good idea that comes from the public will spread. And so it's their duty and they feel their obligation to stop it. And that's what they're doing right here. And I think we need to do whatever we can to um, fight against them, to protect our own interests, but also the interests of other cities and towns every place in the country. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Elliot. Hi, can you hear me? Yep. Hi, uh, my name is Elliot. Um, I live in East Hampton, but I work in Northampton uh, downtown. Um, I'm speaking you to, to, to you today um, as an evaluation specialist. Um, I have seven years of experience as a professional evaluator. Um, so now that I've sort of done the invisible handshake of like whiteness and privilege um, to make that make you maybe listen to me, um, what I'd like to say is that from the point of view of evaluation, um, one thing that happens a lot um, with bodies like city councils, um, all kinds of, of things that make commissions like this, is that people think that if you get enough data in one place, it's going to magically grow solutions. Um, that That is just sort of a, a thing that people come into um, this work believing. And it's not actually true. If you put enough data in one place and you don't put structures in place to meaningfully create learning and change from that data, if that's not baked into the process, what you get is a lot of data in one place and most people don't even read the report. Um, that is a, a huge struggle in my profession. Um, so with this commission set up the way it is right now, it's not gonna get you what you want unless what you want is a report that doesn't lead to any change. Um, and I'm not gonna speculate on how many people uh, on this call want that. Um, or not, but um, but if if what you want is an actual change process, um, an actual plan, you can't divorce the data creation from the decision making process. They need to be part of the same body. They need to be part of the same process, and you need a plan. And as someone else in this call pointed out really well, a scaffolded plan to make that happen. Um, in I am happy uh, if you need consultation on how to create a scaffolding plan to create learning and meaning from your data and then create change from that learning. Um, but right now this commission isn't going to do that for you. Um, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Next is Will Meyer. Hello, can you guys hear me? Can you see yep. me? Cannot see you, can hear you. Okay, how about now? I mean, you're fuzzy, but we can see you. Okay, so I just wanna go through each point of what the commission has proposed to study and be like, um, we already know the answers to all these things and like, we don't really need to study them, which I'm echoing what many people- Will you say said. your name and city or town of residence, please? Uh, yeah, Will Meyer, East Hampton, Massachusetts. I'm editor of the Shoestring. Uh, uh, so with regards to department side structure, services, and budget, we know the answer here. The research is done. Our department is abnormally large. Uh, you guys did the right thing by starting to cut the budget. Use of force policies. We have banned chokeholds. We have a strong policy. The point here is to take away guns, guns and other weapons. Citizen complaint process. We know it shouldn't be run by Robert Powers. That is simply unconscionable and wrong. Recruitment and diversity policies. Useless if the police union protects people who violate police policy. We know the answer here. Training and equipment. Uh, we trained with Joe Arpaio. In emails about Casper's trip to Israel, uh, Casper showed, and between Casper, emails between Casper and Narkowitz revealed that Casper 
didn't understand what a lone wolf, the, the movement, the white supremacist movement behind the lone wolf terrorists, uh, read our report, uh, birthright for cops, uh, data collection and transparency. Many people have spoken to us. The open data portal is outdated and we have no data about police misconduct. You know, the answer here, body worn cameras in 2017, an 18 month study of 2000 police found that body cams had little effect on police behavior, Google the study in the New York Times, the research is done, it is insulting to our intelligence, that it is even listed in a town that rejected surveillance cameras. These are surveillance cameras who, that do not hold police accountable. Union contracts, we know they protect bad cops and shield the police from their accountability. Uh, we don't need research on that. Uh, civilian uh, oversight and review models, a good idea with legal power. Um, Northampton patted itself on the back for participation in the Obama's 28th First Century Policing Commission and did the transparency thing. They didn't do this. I wonder why. As far as transitioning to uh, 911 calls for mental health, houselessness, substance abuse disorder, and so on, yes, we know the answer. The experiments are done. Take the ones that work and implement non punitive response to help people in Northampton. We talked about this in our um, uh, interview with Alex Vitale. Um, and <clears throat> as far as an examination of alternative to current policing practices, yes, we've been saying this in council meetings for years. I don't think. Like, you know, the, the, the notion that uh, that we need to study these things is, is just, it feels, uh, it feels insulting to, uh, to all of us who have been paying attention to all this stuff for so long. So uh, I stand with everybody else and, and encourage you to, to, to move, move on from this. It's, it's done already, it's, it's over. Thank you. Next is Annie. Hi, thank you. Um, my name is Annie Wood. I live in Ward 3 of Northampton. Um, I wanted to speak against the mayor's proposed commission and remind everyone of the, I think now dozens possibly of stories we've heard about police brutality, assaults, harassment, and racial profiling. Um, over the past few weeks and that many of us have known about for years. Um, that to my knowledge, the city council and the mayor still have not acknowledged. Um, police violence is an epidemic, it's an emergency, um, including in our community, despite so-called claims of progressive policing. Um, and it's important that you take action right now by defunding the Northampton Police Department at least 50%. Um, rather than trying to divert this movement into some kind of bureaucratic body, which seems like an obvious attempt at co-opting or breaking protest, um, because that's what it always is when you set up commissions like this. Thank you, I yield my time. Thank you. Next is Jessica Johnson. Can you hear me? Yep. So I wanna thank you. Oh, my name is Jess Johnson and I live in uh, Ward 6, Northampton. Hi, Mary Ann. I wanna thank you all for, for your votes on Thursday to begin the alignment of our budget and the structures and missions of our city's institutions with, the value, with our values as a city. The fight, as we know, is not over. 10% is not it. But so far, what I've witnessed was a council that reluctantly at first and unevenly throughout, but courageously, in the context of the world we live in, began to listen to your residents, to your own hearts, and to stand up and on the right side of history. I have not seen this on behalf of the mayor, not now, not in the years I've been involved in city politics around policing. I'm aware from this work that we've done together before that your power as a council over policing in this town may be minimized by the charter and the legal interpretations thereof. So like others, instead of a joint commission, if further study is needed to determine the means by which you'll affect these changes, I urge the creation of a city council select committee as originally proposed by councilors Mayori and Jarrett to explore how in your power as a legislative body, you can pursue alternatives to the police. I also wanna say that I understand that efforts to intimidate the council have already begun and I am so sorry. These baseless claims are a threat to democracy, to you and to the residents who've been in touch with you. Um, in this context, I wanna emphasize that intimidation of you as a result of what was honestly a pretty small reduction to the department's budget, it seems to me that in this context is all the more important to constitute this body within the council itself and with the support of your own legal counsel. Thank you. 
Thank you. Next is Eli Liebman. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, um, I echo all the fact-based reports that people have been sharing. I wanna speak a little bit about the imaginary that Northampton has. I grew up here, um, lived in Florence in Ward 5, now I live in Ward 4. Um, Northampton is not unique and could become unique. Um, it likes to think that it is unique, um, but it is a small liberal town like any other and it can take a bold step to be something different. Um, the commission is completely against this step. Uh, you have the unique position to like push forward an imaginary that is about conflict resolution that is nonviolent and doesn't include the police. The police are the gateway into a system of jail incarceration that is like the epitome of what a violent American culture is and we reproduce it locally here. And so while as many facts that we can jam down your throats may or may not sway you. I ask you to look into your hearts and think about what you want to see the future to look like for people like me, people younger than me. This is like, a, this is a very significant point in history that you can become an active role in or you can be on the wrong side. And I think that um, it would behoove you to think broader than a commission. A commission is clearly designed to perpetuate the status quo. Um, I don't even think much study is needed. It's done and also the only thing that you can do as a city council member is cut the budget. And with money and taxpayer money in Northampton, there will be other solutions because we are invested in creating a good community for our people. So yeah, have, take a deep breath, have a little imagination and you know, exercise some creativity. It's way more fun than going through line items. And I encourage you to reach out to us to do it. Um, we'll be watching this whole time. Thank you. Next is J.H. Martin. Hi, y'all, can you hear me? Yes. Hi, this, my name is JT Martin. Um, I use they, them pronouns. I'm here in Ward 2 in Northampton. And I just want to say a few words and I'll debrief because I realize we're close to time. Um, but one, I just want to echo a lot of the sentiments we've, I've heard so far from my fellow constituents um, and folks who've shared on this call, um, except with Karen Sullivan. Um, and I want to also just remind, like looking at this document and this, the composition and direction of the commission, like so much of the conversations from tonight and past the past uh, sessions have been around looking and exploring or wanting to dream of abolition for police, for the police department, um, and not necessarily studying and tracking and like so much has been already said about those things um, in all of these sessions. So I just want to remind the council that um, we're here, we're supporting you, we're, we're demanding, we're asking for, for something more. Um, and one, and then two, I think this is just a, a, a general um, expansion of some of the points that I've heard here uh, about like wanting to create a more democratic city government. Um, and, and, and I wanna like encourage the council to think about what that means like for you all as, as a legislative body of our city um, to make sure that you're, you're actually claiming that um, the power that you all, all have access to or um, should demand on behalf of our residents. Um, in juxtaposition to what the mayor has or has not or does or, or says needs to happen. So um, yeah, that's really all. I'll yield the rest of my time um, for other speakers. Thank you. Next is Catherine Kay. Hi, I'm Catherine Kay. I live in Ward 5. And I'd like to say that I think this Joint Commission is exactly the right uh, response to this critical issue that we're facing as a community. And I think that it's important that we keep in mind that we are one community, um, that, this, um, that we see ourselves as residents, mayors, council members, city employees, as being on the same team. Um, we all want the best Northampton and all of the Northampton services um, to be um, to be the best that it, that they can be. We all have the same goal. 
Um, I see this commission as something that will be effective. It has action as its um, intended result. And um, I hope that um, you will um, adopt the proposed commission. Thank you. Thank you. Next is Sasha Bratton. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, I'm Sasha. I live in East Hampton. Um, I think the commission is exactly the wrong response. Um, we are one community, but we're not all treated that way. I think that's pretty clear. Um, I like to say we're on the same team, but certainly doesn't feel that way at protests with the police. Um, I think that the, the mayor keeps trying to get you to do what he wants you to do by telling you that this is what you wanted to do or what he thought you wanted to do. And I think you need to start just doing what you want to do. Um, obviously, the commission isn't the right solution, but I also want to not forget about the $863,000 $536 that was taken out of the mayor's original budget and the commission's not doing anything about that money now. I mean, the commission's not doing anything about any money ever, really. Maybe it will have some influence on next year's fiscal budget, but where did that money go now and why isn't it being put back into the community the way that, you know, I think it was intended when it was taken from the police budget. Um, and I also want to um, note that the, the, the state law, the Massachusetts General Law, Chapter 31, Section 39, which is what requires that employees with the same title be separated from their employment according to their seniority, um, specifically is employees with the same title. So you don't have to separate employees with the title of patrol officer when there are other employees with other titles like school resource officer or lieutenant or sergeant or captain and things like that. And so that's all I wanted to say. I yield the rest of my time. Thank you. Next is Anthony King. Here. Here you go. Okay, thank you. Anthony King, I use he, him pronouns. I live in Ward 3. Um, I realize the council can at times get bogged down in details about the committees or defunding, but I think that sometimes we have to look at the essence of a thing and make our judgments based on our analysis of the essence. We have concentration camps at the border. We have sheriff in Arizona that we've sent our police to train with, who pretty much admits he's running concentration camps for our brown people. And we have a police force that's firmly aligned with ICE, that shares information with ICE, that culturally, there's no distance between US police culture and ICE. Um, they cannot be reformed. The council should not be hoodwinked by the mayor's proposal. It will do nothing. The mayor is firmly aligned with the police. And as others have said, every single issue that this committee is supposed to investigate has been investigated thoroughly. And there are conclusions made by people who are informed on this subject. We need to reject this and move towards an abolitionist framework. This is an evil system that you should not participate in and we should resist. No amount of progressive policing saves the people who enter the prison system. This is a racially segregated prison system in which half of Massachusetts prisoners are black, or sorry, half of non-white when only 17% of our population is non-white. Travis P. New Jim Crow, end it. We're all encouraging the council to take more power, pay yourselves more, redo the city charter, take away power from the executive. 
we know that they will always serve the most entrenched and moneyed interests. You are the voice of the people. Take more power. I yield my time. Thank you. Uh, yeah, Ping Douglas. Um, hi, my name is Yao Ping Douglas. I live in Turner's Falls. I grew up in the area and I go to Northampton quite a lot. Um, I'm actually just going to reiterate some quotes that I read last time because I think they're worth repeating just to have um, to root what your actions as a council are right now in history. Um, so again, these are quotes from articles from the New York Times from the 1970s. Um, we're all for integration, said Stephen Knight Jr., a member of the Denver Board of Education. We just don't think busing is the right way. We're thinking of a variety of other programs. We're trying to bring up achievement levels. That's the direction we're headed now. Um, and I didn't spell out the parallels last time, but in case it's not clear, the council putting effort and energy into this commission instead of just cutting the budget 50% is doing exactly what these, um, so-called white liberals in the 50s were doing back then to block uh, desegregation. Um, I'm gonna reiterate some of the other quotes. Um, the major problem now in the desegregation of the schools is clearly the Northern urban problem. There is no question of this. He, um, the major, the stumbling block to effective integration of Northern schools is the intransigence of the Northern school boards. Southerners, he said, were by and large more honest and direct in their resistance to integration while their Northern counterparts made one policy statement after another. So the commission is one more policy statement after another. We're not making this up. We're not just saying you'd be like the white liberals 50 years ago or during slavery. It's, it, the, it's not just a metaphorical parallel, it's real. Um, another article just last year in the Washington Post about um, desegregation in the South also outlined some of the specifics just so that it's, um, you know, not vague, the, the parallels. Um, there, so there was, F, when a decade long movement for school desegregation in New York City led to a massive school boycott in February, 1964, calling for a comprehensive plan for desegregation a full decade after Brown, the New York Times referred to it as unjustified and violent. Whereas, I'm still reading from this article, um, whereas the news media helped underscore the urgency of the black civil rights movement in the South in the 1950s and 1960s, by the mid 1960s and 70s, white anti-busing protesters received the bulk of the media attention. Television and print news helped establish the issue as busing, not segregated schools, which obscured that these protesters were fighting against school desegregation. Framing this the issue this way allowed them to argue that federal intervention was needed in the South, but not in the North. So we are the North. By overemphasizing white parents and politicians' resistance to busing at the expense of the civil rights black students, the news media contributed to the perspective among white Americans that busing was foolhardy and moving too fast. So I've been hearing you say we can't move too fast. That's exactly what white people said back then. Thank you. Okay, that um, is the time actually. And um, the last hand. So we are gonna close public comment. Um, one hand just went up, but it's someone who has previously spoken. Okay, I'm gonna take one more hand because we're actually at the time. And then um, we are gonna end. Vida. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, it's very echoey. Hi, is that better? Yes. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, so, hi, my name is Vita King, and as of recently, I live in East Hampton, but I lived in Northampton for a few years, and I work in Northampton. Um, I just want to echo everyone who's been critical of this commission. Uh, it's pretty clearly symbolic and delays concrete action towards more police defunding and eventually abolition. Um, um, it's already inherently biased in favor of police because of who's involved. I also second the person who spoke to how difficult it is to find and join these meetings, which seems maybe intentional as there's really no good reason for that. And lastly, I agree with everyone who's spoken to how problematic it is to have council members say they were afraid of protesters at the last two actions. 
I was a part of these protests and the energy was absolutely inspiring and uplifting. Um, there were also consistent efforts by organizers who held the microphones to mitigate any potential for fears by consistently addressing neighbors and children directly um, to tell them exactly why we were there and that we meant no harm. Um, so again, claims that these protests were scary demonstrates a clear disconnect be between council members and this community and is also why we're still here discussing timid, symbolic non-action such as this commission. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we're gonna close. Um, we will convene in a minute, but let's take a five minute break and then we will roll and uh, convene, okay? Okay, thank you. We are back. Again, there's only one item on the agenda this evening. Laura, when you are ready, can you please call the roll? Councillor Dwight. Here. Councillor Foster. Here. Councillor Jarrett. Here. Councillor Labarge. Here. Councillor Maori. Here. Councillor Nash. Here. Councillor Quinlan. Here. Councillor Shara. Here. And Councillor Thorpe. Here. Okay, Madam Chair, you have a quorum. Thank you. Okay, I'm going to invite the mayor to join us. There he is. Okay. Um, and so this is the continuation of the presentation and discussion on the Northampton Policing Review Commission, which is a joint commission of the city council and the mayor. Um, just to recap where we are at the end of the special meeting on June 10th, um, Councilor Mayori asked if the commitment that had been made by the mayor and myself to sit down and take the concerns of the community and what we've been hearing in testimony um, and then come up with a process to turn into change, if we could take that commitment and if we could flesh it out a bit um, and put something down to be presented to the council before the budget vote, um, before the budget was voted on and finalized on the 18th. Um, additionally, in that conversation, Councilor Murray asked that research was, agreed that research was needed um, to do what's right for the city and bring together all these concerns and bring about change and ask that there also be a commitment of funding to the process to put our money where our mouth is. So um, Mayor Narkowitz and I agreed to do that. And that is what we are now discussing. We presented it as promised at the meeting last Thursday on June 18th before the general fund was voted on. Um, and at that presentation, um, there was a request for Council Mayor to continue the conversation to have more time to look at the document um, which other councilors agreed to. So that brings us to where we are right now to this special meeting. And we are happy to continue that discussion. Mayor, I don't know if there's anything you would like to add to that. No. Okay. So you, okay, Councilor Jarrett. Uh, just a so process note. So we are not voting on anything tonight. Is that correct? That's correct. Um, you know, we've put forward this commission. That's a joint commission. Um, if there are recommendations, you know, we'd be happy to hear them and have them given to us. And um, either they'd be recommendations that we would incorporate um, or look at incorporating into the commission or um, what or their recommendations that would go directly to the commission once it's been um, been convened and, and brought together as a body. Okay, so I mean I understand of course the mayor uh, can create commissions. Um, so is is the mayor the person with the ultimate power then here? And and I guess I'm just trying to clarify what the council's role in acceptance of this commission is. Okay, Mayor, did you want to answer that or? Again, I just would echo what the council president said that at your, not the last meeting, but the meeting prior, um, the council asked myself and the council president to come sit down and to try to develop a framework and to bring it back to the council. So um, I'm, 
I'm it's being structured as a joint commission with um, you know equal not even equal appointing authority but appointing authority for both the council and the and the mayor and um, and then the commission itself is then independent and goes to work um, collects its own chair and sets its agenda and sets its meetings and all those things so um, that's really the sum total of it and it's you know it's not unprecedented that um, a council and a mayor have put together ad hoc committees it's happened in the past on a number of different issues um, and so that was sort of the model on which it was based and again the goal was to try to do it in a um, sort of a by uh, not by cameral, but but having both branches of um, government involved in the process. Yes, yes. Um, I guess it's just that we never voted. It, it, it was just a recommend. You know, some folks we said, "Oh, that sounds like a good idea," but we never actually voted on that. Um, which I, you know, I'm, I'm understanding that's perhaps not how it's but it's done when you do ad hoc committees. But I know, you know, in our case, and for the council, we, we do a resolution to establish a select committee. So I'm just pointing that out. And I'm, I'm looking forward to this discussion tonight, for sure. And so just maybe to clarify a little bit more, um, you know, I think there's maybe some confusion about the difference between multi-member bodies that are, um, that are standing committees or commissions that are Put for, you know that that the mayor does create by order. This is not what this is. This is not something that only that the mayor is creating under his power to do that. Um, this is something that's being jointly proposed. You all asked me to do it um, as your representative, and jointly proposed by those two bodies. I'm looking for hands. Councillor Foster, you can unmute, right? Yeah. I can. Okay, um, Mayor and Council President, um, I do wanna thank you for the, the work that went into to this. And um, I, you know, I do remember our, our asking you uh, for this before we took our, our first vote um, on the budget. Um, I, you know, I, I just, I guess what I want to address that I'm hearing is overall a mistrust, and I, and I spoke with a constituent this afternoon, I've answered some emails, um, that there's a, a, a sort of a, a general mistrust that the commission um, is going to have authority here. And, and what I would like to say is, is, first of all, I think that this is, um, as I said at the last meeting, um, I really like the process here. Um, I noticed the council has more appointees than the mayor. Um, it's clear how much thought went into this, the commission having citizen chairs, uh, just a, suggest, a starting list of topics. It's certainly not limited to that. Um, and, you know, I, I definitely have heard talk of, well, the research is out there. Um, and yes, it is. And I think that the work of this commission now is to take the research that is out there and distill it down to what we have in Northampton and how that's going to work and how we're going to implement it in Northampton. Um, and, and I know I, I just want to address that that fear that I hear from people that this is sort of where things go to sit on a shelf, maybe in a binder or something. Um, and I, I guess I want to name, first of all, that um, I think is important um, in our selection process. So I do want to spend some time tonight talking about how council will select people um, for it. And I, and I hope that that process will help to gain some public buy-in and trust with this. Uh, but the other thing I just wanna name is that this commission um, has some real potential to prioritize, um, make recommendations and really, really bring the research that is out there. We're, we're certainly on council aware of it. People uh, have been bringing it to me. I'm certainly aware there's a great deal of research out there, um, but that research doesn't translate into action without people to do the action. Um, and so I am looking forward to this opportunity. And the last thing I wanna address is that it doesn't end with a commission. I, I wanna be clear on that. Um, I support this, I support this proposal. Um, and I also recognize that, that doesn't, there's nothing in there that precludes council from going ahead and studying and researching and proposing legislative um, solutions to this as well. It's not like the commission is the thing and oh, oh, it's done and then we'll see you again in March. That, 
that's not how I view it as all, but I, I view this as an important um, step and a really important um, option uh, for real meaningful change from, from the branches that have that, that opportunity. Um, Mayor, I just have one quick question for you. Um, is I know that, and I appreciate um, that, that you have a commitment to file a financial order with the city council to fund consulting and staff support. I, I think that's really critical. One question I wanted to ask for you as we're talking about populations that have been impacted by policing is language may be a barrier. Um, and if there's an option with a financial order um, for if translation is needed or other accommodations to allow somebody to participate who may not be able to otherwise. Certainly, that would be an option. I mean, I, I, again, that's sort of an open-ended um, part of that proposal because it's yet to be seen what whether the commission would want a staff person, whether they would want some consultant, what and what other support services they would require. But um, certainly, language um, in whether it's language translation or sign language or whatever, you know, whatever the um, whatever the modality, that would certainly be something that could be part of that funding. It's sort of yet to be determined. And can I just also, can I also just add that um, you know I, I don't think I, I've heard people say that um, that the commission doesn't have um, power, and actually the council neither the council nor the mayor can actually give our power to someone else. Like we can't actually do that under our charter. We're not allowed to. Um, you know we can impanel committees and commissions, but they can only be advisory to the mayor and to the um, to the city council, we can't actually give someone else our, or give them independent authority. Um, that would require, you know, we do have some boards and committees in Northampton that actually do have independent authority. Um, you know, the license commission, for example, or the board of health, but those are given to them under state law. So that would require, you know, that would require a pretty major structural charter type change in order to do that. So actually, you know, we're, we're we're the folks who stood election uh, for these positions. And so, you know, we, any body we create can really only make recommendations. And then we're accountable to the voters for actually what, what happens with those recommendations. So anyway, I just, I know you didn't ask me that, but just in, in discussing this, um, I, I heard that come up a number of times tonight. Um, while I'm waiting for another hand, I'll just make another point about something that I'd heard um, that is, so in the proposal, it, this would be a body that would be subject to open meeting law. So just like us, they um, would, all their meetings would have to be public meetings. There would be no private meetings. They would all be public meetings that anyone could attend um, and people could comment at and tell their views to the commission and would be able to see everything that the commission um, not only discusses, but any of the, anything that they created, any, any, communication that they have is still subject to open meeting law. Councillor Nash. Um, yeah, so a technical question, I think I know the answer, but um, this is not going to be a council body per se, as like a one of our committees, um, but I wanna make sure that, um, that, so there will be two councillors, we anticipate two councillors being part of this, um, uh, but also that we're not violating open meeting law by being interested in wanting to attend it. Um, so one of the ways we get around that is we post all of our committee meetings and this meeting as council meetings. So I'm just asking the question, uh, is it gonna be okay for all of us to attend a commission meeting, although we're not all speaking, we're, it means we can't be sharing during that meeting, but those two counselors could. Um, or they might be sharing something that affects our agenda. I, I don't know the answer to that, but I'm, I'm really interested in hearing what the commission has to say. And um, so, and as I think a lot of counselors will be, and um, I, I just like to get that piece clarified. I mean, I guess I would say that if, um, if there's a quorum of the council or a subcommittee, um, you could not deliberate mm -hmm. in their in their meeting. But you could attend and listen and. Um, yeah. Oh, absolutely. Of course. Oh. 
Thank you for clarifying. I mean, if you know, we could see if there's a if if there's a, a serious concern, um, we could see if a cross post would be possible for some meetings if if we think that that's certainly you know if if let's say the council was invited in particular to come to a a commission meeting, right? Um, then we would want to make sure that that was posted in a way that we could participate. Um, Councillor Labarge. Yes, um, I have heard even tonight about not liking the committee. I've heard some people telling me that they cannot even Zoom and they have no way to go ahead and be able to be on the Zooming. My big concern is of what we've been hearing every time we're doing Zooming. Now we're hearing as counselors that they do not want this commission. 40% are saying that the mayor has 40% of appointing somebody to be on the commission. They don't like that. There's the trust is gone. There's no question about it here. Um, we are a legislative body. Why don't we look at, since we're not voting on this, I'm just bringing out some concerns here of doing a legislative process led by a city councilors. To me, I think that's being fair with everybody. And also, once it is led by the city council and the people of Northampton, I think that's important here. We've heard about a select committee and I have to agree with that also. I feel like Dr. Andrea Lebrun, um, Andrea of Abazon is excellent. And we do have safe passage. We have many agencies as a legislative body that we could bring in and work with them. That's, that's just something I'm thinking about. Thanks. Sure. Um, I, I will say that the mayor and I talked extensively about having um, social service agencies be part of the commission and actually we're going to sort of designate different um, appointees that would be, you know, from social service agencies or sort of different categories and decided that um, we, that is something that we would certainly look for, but we wanted to make sure that we could have as broad a representation as possible. And we didn't want to, uh, you know, kind of create these boxes that might be hard um, to fill. We're asking people to do a big, you know, large commitment, but we certainly talked about specifically asking people from different agencies um, and organizations that would, um, that would be sharing in this work uh, be part of the commission. Um, just to your point about the, uh, you know, a council legislative committee, um, you know, a, a select committee from the council, that's, I mean, that's fine, but I, you know, Councilor Labarge, you certainly understand that the council can, um, can, can not put forward legislation that, um, that would be a change to a city department or that would involve changing to, to personnel or staff. So, you know, my concern is that I'm not sure what kind of substantive change will happen if we're putting forward, if we can only put forward um, ordinance changes that don't involve the Northampton Police Department, honestly. Okay, but my question is, Instead of having what we have in front of us right now is we are the legislative body. So as city councilors, why can we not all together, us councilors, form a body? Why cannot why can't that be done? I, I just explained that we can. can. I explained understand that. I, well, I, I, I tried to explain the limitations of doing that. If someone else wants to speak to it, that's fine. Councilor Dwight. Um, yes, let me, let me make sure I'm not, okay. Um, yes, we actually can uh, 
have a concurrent, and in fact, actually, you, you will be addressing a resolution that we can't deliberate right now, but we have the opportunity to actually have uh, a, a council committee um, researching and, under, and trying to understand what possible legislation will be appropriate for us to apply. And so it's not a disqualifier. These things are not mutually exclusive. This, this uh, committee that we requested, and in fact, actually, in, in a couple of instances, made it a condition of a vote um, required of the council president and of the mayor to get together and come to us with a proposal that would allow us to consider systemic changes. So um, the, the council president and the mayor have done just that. So um, the, it doesn't mean that we can't have other committees that we are uh, um, allowed by uh, our rules and by the charter and by the, the uh, mass general law and the state constitution. We can still do those as well. Councilor Mayori. I thought you guys can unmute. There you go. There we go. Yeah, so I, I just wanted to say, um, you know, I, as I say, I appreciate the work. I, re, I, I appreciated the quick action that you and the mayor took in getting on this and getting something drafted. Um, I just want to clarify, uh, because that was a nine and a half hour meeting and there was a lot going on. I, I wasn't requesting a committee or a joint commission. I was actually speaking mostly to the mayor and, and asking um, for some fundamental, and it, it was, I'm, I understand it was vague, but like fundamental uh, shifts by the next week. And that could have included further reductions, that could have been reallocation of funding was a big one in my head. Um, it could include um, addressing some of the concerns that uh, we've heard from residents. And I would say residents, and I would say, I mean, one thing that would have been kind of nice, or we could still do before something like this would be to kind of rebuild some trust here. Uh, I think what we really need is some sort of truth and re re reconciliation forum, like right off the bat, um, kind of simultaneously, because um, to kind of answer questions and kind of take responsibility for our part in any anything that's happened here. I think, uh, you know, people have been asking me questions about the use of pepper spray, the, the large paramilitary mobilization, the last protest, um, complaints about disturbing behavior brought up. Like, against active officers, um, the ceasing the use of coupling. Um, these types of forums, they're not really meant to punish you when it's really about to kind of vet, vet things and rebuild trust and heal the community so we can move forward. And I don't think that trust is there right now, which would really strengthen an effort like this, especially something that's quite unusual. And I, I guess I would have to object to um, establishing something in the council's name without a vote. Uh, so um, yeah, I would I would think that. I, so I, I would also just say right now, I mean, things that could happen right the second would be the, the mayor addressing some of these lingering questions because um, I I can't answer them. So thanks. And yeah, I'll leave it at that. Uh, Councillor Quinlan. Well, thank you very much. Um, I'm gonna actually take these out so I can hear myself. So last week, uh, we, we were presented with this. Um, and, you know, at, at the moment, I was, I was pretty excited about it. Uh, maybe some of you remember, uh, in, on June 4th, I, I spoke that I thought we needed something like this. I referenced our Committee on Sustainability that was created in 2005, that that was something that, that did have legs, by the way. It did have, it's, it's a beacon to this day, as, as Councillor Dwight mentioned, for our essential services and also for our sustainability. I was planning on sustainability. Uh, it is uh, something that has had a tremendous impact on our community. Uh, over the last uh, 12 years, uh, including being updated uh, or, or, you know, 
looked at every five years for uh, modernization. But I think that's important. We heard uh, a suggestion that maybe this type of commission also have a long ranging effect, not just being done in December of this year, but maybe we consider this going longer and, and being an active thing that we're always working on bettering. Um, the same day that we got this, I know not all the counselors that got a, got a visit, but I got this um, in my mailbox. Uh, I was at work and wasn't home in time to, to greet the, the rolling protests that came to uh, 712 Bridge Road. You probably have the address anyways. Um, but you know, I, as I've thought about this today and over the last couple of days, really, I thought, how did, how does, how did this and this work together? How do they match up to take Northampton to the next level? I, I spoke about really wanting to make progress. I spoke about us using creativity. Um, and so how do we, how do, we do that? I, I think this commission's a, a great first step. I also do see uh, that a select committee could have some impact on some immediate things. Um, you know, uh, I spoke to a resident on the phone today who was really encouraging. We spoke last week and she was really, um, you know, championing the idea of a 35% decrease. Um, and we had a great talk and I learned a lot. We spoke again today and she said, boy, I was reading this, uh, this announcement of this commission. And I think it's great because it's to, just a quarter, it's very complete, but at the same time, it's not limiting, right? Because it says right in here, study these things, but not just these things if there's other things that come up. Um, so I just wanted to say, say all of that because, you know, again, I, I had an email from a resident, very thoughtful email, very well written about the hope that, that this commission gives him. Um, and, but also the skepticism which kind of exists around, will we make this actually do something for the greater good, and I, and I, you know, I, I for one, and I know that I know that my my colleagues here and the mayor as well, um, you know, we we're pledging to to make this happen. We're, so I'm I'm about this commission. I'm also about the fact that that getting the report uh, and and investing in this, uh, you know, really gives us the chance to to hold the mayor accountable. It gives us a chance to hold each other accountable. I'm you know, so I'm in support, and I I thank you. Uh, very much for this, and and you know I'm I have some ideas about discussion about how we how we fill these roles, the nomination and vetting process when we get to that as well. But I just wanted to to say that that I do think we have to figure out how these two these two documents work together, and and this commission is is built to do that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dwight. Oh, thank you. Uh, I just want to caution everyone um, that. We have to be careful about talking about something, items that will be pending in the next council meeting that's part of the next council agenda, and that will include resolutions and proposal. Any conversation, discussions not posted on this agenda and would be a potential violation of the media law. Um, I have to make some comments here. I do, um, you know, obviously we've heard from, I mean, countless residents and, and others about systemic race in, uh, racism and how policing is experienced in this community. And we have heard about the reinforcing structures that are embedded within every dimension of our culture. We've heard from residents who uh, demand that racism and all of its manifestations be addressed. And, you know, as I think I said before, we all have a really long, long way to go. And acknowledging our complicity is really just the start. It is not the achievement. We're not there. And as I said before, by we, I mean every damn one of us. And I think it needs saying that, um, you know, I, like everyone, I've been struck by the extent of the profound and uh, passionate and personal testimony. But, and, and I was especially moved by um, the grace of many of those who described their own experiences. But I, I, I can't, I can't let it pass without comment that there was a distinct and not universal, but a distinct blindness evident in many of the remarks. Um, I heard many people, uh, many white people and persons otherwise privileged, vehemently describe and define the experience of 
being black in particular, but also more generally persons of color, indigenous, queer, trans and with disabilities, white allies and anti-racists, uh, as I aspire to be anyway, that we're not excused from culpability by our advocacy. We don't get a pass, no matter how earnest we are or how zealous we are, or how active. So throughout the 20 hours, maybe more of, I don't know, <laughs> of or so of testimony, we've heard from upwards to a thousand, perhaps more uh, people. I mean, there've been a lot of repeats, but I, I've lost count. And certainly if you include the emails and the phone calls, you know, only three speakers, um, two who chose to disqualify them entirely, acknowledge the presence of Councillor Thorpe. Now, I won't make the same mistake of presuming his feelings on the matter, but I found myself really grimacing multiple times as sincere and earnest white folks explained to us and to him by extension, the black experience in America while essentially erasing a black man, Councillor Thorpe, and then calling for neutralizing him. That is also a demonstration of the pernicious condition of systemic racism. And that's what I mean when I refer to us collectively. I'm not mentioning this to uh, invalidate anyone's testimony. I'm not disputing the points made, but I'm inviting all of us to recognize that none of us are exempt from contributing to the scourge. The work should be and shall be borne by us all. And more pragmatically, obviously there are a couple of, uh, there are more than a couple of approaches. There are many approaches to rebuilding and that's what we're talking about is rebuilding. And our objectives are essentially the same. I'm pretty sure, at least based on what I've heard from the counselors, what I've heard from testimony, what I've heard from the mayor and what I've heard from the police chief. And we differ on how to get there and how fast we get there and what that looks like. We must do a top to bottom reassessment of public safety. And we need to, to be applied equitably and we need all voices. And we can't just dither in well-intentioned aspirations, we must commit to action. Policy and law that reflects a holistic and genuine change and that is what I've heard universally, even by people who uh, express some form of objection to um, some of the appeals that we've, most of the appeals that we've heard today. And this is also reflected in what we're witnessing nationally. And I will say again, this is a moment to be seized. It is a moment to actually, we are called to make radical change. The thing is, is that within <laughs> the difference between demanding radical change and affecting radical change are substantially different. And the mission of the council is to affect radical change by abiding by the constructs and restrictions and limitations of our authority to govern. I agree also, as far as forms or otherwise, I think that there should be broad and many community forums and discussions. I don't think that it would be appropriate for the council to lead those. I mean, I think what you've clearly heard, and this would speak to the mistrust factor, but I think you've clearly heard that people um, are empowered or at least asked to be empowered to participate in the conversation and not a conversation that is led or presided over by us. We are conferred by our station a certain authority, whether we're entitled to or not, I don't know. But the fact remains is that conversations, discussions, fora, idea, you know, collaboration should be done by the community within the community and officiated by the community. Again, that's not mutually exclusive to what we're endeavoring to do. These all, all these systems can work in parallel. All these systems work in parallel towards one goal. 
And that goal is to reimagine, redesign, and reshape what public safety means and to be equitable. And then also to address all the other aspects of systemic embedded institutional racism and white supremacy. And for good measure, patern uh, uh, paternalistic structures. It is a time of great upheaval. And for some, it's a revolution. For us, it's a charge to actually do what we have been charged to do. And that is to deliberate conscientiously and morally and render decisions that have the weight of law. And that is our charge. And we will do it as we have taken an oath to do. And that doesn't disqualify or eliminate anyone else from participating or contributing or even moving situations. And I'll repeat once again, by all means, please run for office. Absolutely run for office. You, I, and, and I, you know, I, to be perfectly candid, I'm a lame duck, but the fact remains is that I, I don't want that, I, as I said, don't run against people or things, run for something and commit yourself to this form of transactional and transitional change. And that's the end of my rant and I will say no more. Okay, thank you. Counselor, uh, anyone else who hasn't yet spoken? Maybe everyone's spoken. No, maybe, no, they have not. All right. Councillor Thorpe. Thank you very much, uh, Councillor Skier, and thank you all the councillors who have spoken uh, today. I also want to say, you know, thank you, uh, uh, Councillor Dwight. I appreciate each and every comment I heard here tonight, and I take that uh, uh, their their comments into consideration. And um, um, it's uh, been an interesting um, um, uh, e events going on for me personally, and for um, listening to my constituents in the ward. And I can tell you that the, this proposal for this commission has been, um, I've heard some really great comments about it and, and uh, from, from people who really wanna see this go forward. But I've also heard from uh, constituents who really are concerned with how much uh, authority they will have and how much their voices uh, will actually be heard. Um, you know, one constituent reached out to me today and said, you know, um, proposed in this, this commission, they want to make sure that they're able, if they're able to develop a plan necessary to move money from the police department to other community services. And, uh, you know, I think it's important that no matter what your opinion is on the matter, that we be respectful to one another and really try to come up with a way that's going to be right for everybody. And, um, and include all the voices that, you know, everyone's voices that matter. I had another constituent want to make sure that we include the LGBTQ community, that we include the elderly, and that we include uh, people with disabilities. So we really have to be mindful of everyone's opinions and, um, you know, do the best we can moving forward. So thank you. Thank you, Councillor Thorpe. Um, Councillor, uh, I'm going to go Councillor LaBarge and then I'll go back to you, Councillor Maiori, okay? Councillor LaBarge. Yes, thank you, Councillor Gina Louise Shera. Um, Councillor John Thorpe, thank you very much um, for you speaking to everybody tonight. Um, I also had great concerns about people with disabilities being included. And also with the Human Rights Commission, I mean, there was problems with that as far as authority and so far and how far they could go with it. Um, people that have called me from Ward 6, who are caseworkers, social workers, who really want to be involved in this commission. And I mean being involved. Some of them said they would even volunteer their time because they've been in it for a long period of time. They've worked with many, many people with disabilities and feel that they could be part of this whole commission and help out with the community. And this is the whole idea of this, is working together. We need to get out of the box, out of the box, and look at the big picture of making everybody in this community to work together and feel safe. That's what it's all about here. And 
as a counselor, I'm very willing to do it, but I still feel of what I'm hearing about setting a, another committee is in a track with me as far as placing it like Alyssa Klein had stated and several other people have. I just think it's important in the direction we're gonna go and I'm very willing to work out whatever has to be done. I thank Gina Louise Shera um, for working with the mayor and putting this out and not voting on this tonight. Um, and it did take time to go over this and look at this language. So I'm very pleased we didn't do it the night that we had a full agenda. So anyways, that's my concerns here. My concerns of bringing back trust because we are hearing that people in this city have lost a lot of trust. And I wanna bring that value back again by putting in the appropriate people on this commission. And I still feel that as a legislative body, that we should be looking at the legislative body who possibly would design some kind of form of legislation so that we would be part of it as all nine counselors working together on it. And that can be done. There's no question about that with a resolution or with whatever. But that's it. I want to thank Eugenia Louise, Shira, our council president, and the mayor. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and, you know, it was very, sorry, I see you, Councilor Jarrett. I'm going to go back to where Councilor Maori. Let me just say, um, you know, as, as we said, it was, it was very important to us that at least a, a majority of the commission would be made up of people most affected by policing. Um, and, but we also, um, you know, we worded it in a way that talks about historically marginalized communities, because we, we really acknowledge that, um, that there are many communities that haven't had a voice on this issue or many or all issues. And we wanna make sure that um, we try and give as much representation on this commission as possible to anyone who feels like they have um, a point of view on the direction that we should go in. That their, voice, their voices are the voices that we wanna hear. Another uh, question I have, Councillor Shira. Okay. People are asking me, is this just for people in the city of Northampton? They feel this is very valuable to know because it doesn't stay down here. It, it actually does state on here that it um, say it. Yeah, it says under uh, a 15 member public body made up of Northampton residents. Okay, but and if they first, work, if they work here, but live like some of them who have called in, they work here. And they also live like in East Stampton or Hadley? We we don't have, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Mayor, but we, we don't, for no committees or commissions, right, do we have non-residents? If they uh, work here in the city? Um, generally, that's what the charter says, that, that you have to be a resident of the city, just like to be an elected official or to serve on a multi-member body, you need to be a resident of the city. And, Pretty certain that's fairly common in most cities and towns as part of their um, government. I just wanted to clarify that because people are asking that. Yep, it's in that first paragraph under size, composition, and appointment process. Okay, I'm going to Councillor Mayor, then Councillor Jarrett. Well, I just, you know, I want to first acknowledge that um, we're all evolving really fast, and I I don't want to get into some false division. I, I feel like um, I think most of us do have the same goal. And I have a lot of compassion for everybody here. And we all work really hard, including the mayor. So I want to put that out there. I just I do need to see, say one more time that I, I really um, I really object to having the council represent something without a vote. I think coming back with proposal that would be, be voted on uh, would have been one thing. But this. Uh, this seems highly unusual to me to, to do so, and I'll leave it that part of that. Um, if it's going to, if we're going to continue to talk about it, I will. I'll give some thoughts on on the document. Um, I think there's some good stuff in there, um, some other stuff. But I would, I hope, if, before this meeting is over, we could hear hear from the mayor a little bit about addressing these immediate concerns that we are getting emailed every day about. And may I, I only say that because I think it would really help. And I think 
uh, I think it would really help build trust if this commission is going to go forward. If we uh, either the councilors could get the answer or the mayor, or we could have a forum where we can uh, address the issues I brought up, the, the you know, process that the rally, the grievances against some officers, uh, Copland, you know, these things. I just think it would help. And so I hope before this evening is up, um, you could just address that in some way. Thank you. Um, you want me to respond? Or? It's up to you. Sure. I, I would say that um, you know this is a special meeting of the council to discuss one item on the agenda, and I'm here. I was asked to be here to discuss it as because I was involved in creating it. I also want to be clear that I'm not trying to force the council to do anything. I'm I'm not forcing the council to be part of this. I was I um, extended uh, the offer at um, the meeting that I brought forward the modified um, budget uh, request um, and um, said that I was willing to work with the council on, on a joint framework and um, heard from a lot of counselors who thought that was a good idea and several who said that you know they wanted us to do that before coming back for the next vote. So that's what we did. But obviously I'm not, it's not my intention to force the council to do anything. Um, and so I just want to make that clear because I've heard people say that it's my commission or, um, you know, I was working on this out of, a, trying to do it out of a spirit of sort of both, um, branches of our municipal government, um, working on it collaboratively. But if that's not what the council wants to do, that's fine. Um, and so that's, I guess that would be my statement on that. But in terms of, um, uh, my then um turning this into a public forum on um you know employees and other matters that you're hearing about i i'm not really sure that that's um that's appropriate in terms of what this meeting is was was posted to be and what it's set up to be so um so that i guess that'd be my comment on that and again i'll I, i'll leave the i mean i think the council should deliberate on whether it wants to participate in this and i think the council can you know, if it wants to take a vote on it, they can. I, it's not my, um, I don't, I'm not part of your process. It's, this is your process. Um, I'm just here because I was asked to be part of the discussion. And, um, but I'm certainly not saying, telling the council what it should do or how it should do it. You'll have to come up with your own decision-making process. So I'm, 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 I'll leave it at that and let you discuss it. Council Mayor, you want to respond? Oh, why? You're the only one who can't unmute. I don't know why. You're, I can't hear you. I can't hear her. Hold on. I think I'm too uh, fast on the mute. Or we just no, have I'm strength. sorry. Hold on. You, I lost, when you, um, I lost yeah. you as co-host somehow. You must have got oh. out. There. Well, I, I did uh, get kicked off during public comment and have to uh, come back on. So perhaps yeah. in that process. That's what so happens. I, yeah. To mute now. I just wanted to assure the mayor, I don't feel he's forcing this on us. That's, that's not, I, I think we're all, you know, there's good intentions coming here. It's just, it's a, we all know this has been a lot. It's been a, a lot, three and a half weeks. And, you know, we're learning. And I, I just, um, you know, it, this just wasn't uh, sitting right with me that way. Uh, because I feel, um, you know, I just feel like city council has a role that is independent and it doesn't have to be adversarial, but it play it, it kind of represents people more directly. And and to the point about like the, the grievances and the and the kind of truth and reconciliation idea, I didn't mean we had to do it right now. It's not on the agenda, but just um, some bearing for this. Is will, will there be a time where these questions will be answered? What what could that look like? Um, that's what I was looking for tonight, Mayor. Um, hold on. Hold on, wait. So I guess my question, I guess my response would be is that counselors can always ask me, you know, send, send me questions or ask for information and you do it routinely and we try to provide answers uh, to those questions. So um, to the extent that there are questions, we'll try to answer them. But I, I, that's what we do all the time. And obviously it's even embedded in the charter that there's a process for asking uh, questions of the mayor and seeking information of the mayor. Um, I mean, we don't follow, we don't, 
follow it as formally as the charter lays out, which requires a vote of the charter. We just generally, if we get requests for information, we we um, we try to provide that information. Um, but I, I distinctly thought you said that before we go anywhere tonight, I want to hear the mayor answer all these questions. So maybe I misheard you, but um, that didn't really seem like it was um, what was uh, what I was asked to come here to do tonight. So. Um, Councilor Jarrett, you've been waiting patiently. Okay. Oh, no worries. Um, thank you. Uh, and I just wanted to touch briefly back on um, some things Councilor Dwight said, um, I guess around, uh, you know, I've heard from a lot of folks um, about divisiveness and uh, about need about the call for respect. And this is tough. This is a tough thing to talk about because there's, I know that there has been and continues to be consistent disrespect uh, toward so many, you know, Black, Indigenous, people of color, uh, LGBTQ, um, people with disabilities, many, and you know, um, people of low, uh, with low incomes, and um, so it can feel hard, I think, to, to ever talk to anyone about respect in that, you know, because it's so good that people are speaking up um, and that, are, you know, people are speaking up who haven't been at these meetings. And that's, that's really wonderful. Um, but we're, there also is a way in which uh, we're driving uh, like wedges between people and, um, and, I want to figure out how we can invite people in and listen, even when there is strong disagreement. I think that's part of nonviolence. Um, that's part of the world that I want to see, and that's not easy. Um, so it's just something that that I want to be thinking about. Um, and um, so I just wanted to say that first. Um, and then, you know, heard many voices arguing that we should not have this joint commission, um, that the viewpoints of the mayor and the council or the mayor and the people are too different. So I want to acknowledge those viewpoints. I feel conflicted um, because we have a strong mayor governmental structure. Um, maybe some people wish that was different, but it is where we are at. We need to work with the mayor to enact major changes. The mayor is accountable to the city. Next year is an election year. Um, I know that you know you want um, <clears throat> Mayor, you want to listen, um, <clears throat> and you have been listening. Um, and it is it's up to us, the council and the community, to hold uh, <clears throat> the mayor accountable uh, to to you know if this commission goes forward um, <clears throat> to the that to, to follow the recommendations. Um, the council you know is going to have a majority of seats on the commission. And if the results of the commission aren't to the council's liking, um, we do have the power of the purse. You know, we get to, and we've shown, we've shown this month that we are ready to use that. And we are really taking our power in that way. Um, so just, just put that as far as some, you know, conflict as far as, because I also believe that we need a select committee or a committee study request to ind independently focus specifically on the legislative and budgetary aspects, and we can work concurrently. Um, you know, potential alternatives are a select committee that the council established and a mayoral commission that works together and independently. Um, <clears throat> so just putting that out there as well. Um, and um, <clears throat> Mayor, I want to ask, because it kind of, you know, I know your commitment to city and to, um, you know, caring about people. And I want to ask um, you to talk about your commitment it, to moving money from policing to alternatives and to support human needs uh, rather than policing um, and about holding um, people accountable, officers uh, that we've heard complaints about accountable. I think it is 
it's related to this topic because I need to know that you are really with us. Um, and uh, that's so um, I yeah, I just I just want to hear from that. Let me hear from you. Sorry if if, uh, if you could. Thank you. Uh, sure, counselor. Yeah, I mean, I, I think I when I submitted my request or my email to folks, um, you know, I tried to express to people that um, that when we obviously when I submitted the budget back on May 18th, um, we were in a completely different place. And, um, and the world has changed in our, our nation, you know, we the events that have happened over the last several weeks. Um, has sort of crystallized uh, what we've sort of talked about and discussed. And there have been, um, uh, you know, there, as others have said, there have been efforts over time. But I, I think we are at a place now where we have to um, look at these issues on a fundamental level. And I think actually Chief Casper has said that as well. I mean, both of us have issued statements um, to that effect. Um, and so, you know, I am committed to that and I'm committed to you know, if that is what the community, where the community wants us to move, um, then I will be, I, I will carry out that and I will work on that. The challenge becomes, you know, we, I, I do, you know, I guess call me a wonk or call me whatever, but I, I'm somebody who um, has, you know, spent the better part of my life working in public policy. I was, a, you know, that was my, that was my major in college. I you know, worked as a as an aide for many years um, in, in Congress. Um, I take these issues very seriously. I work on these issues as a as a resident who served on you know city boards and commissions. Um, I did it as a city councilor, um, and you know I think it's one of the reasons why people entrusted me with this role of mayor is that I take these issues seriously. I try to hear from all sides. Um, I try to not make decisions, um, serious decisions lightly without a lot of input, without a lot of you know, data and without a lot of um, you know, trying to have public um, input. I mean, you know, you, you saw me, you subjected yourself to many of those override town hall meetings that I held around the city. Um, and so if I was somebody who didn't care about getting public input, um, I mean, I, I, I've always done that with budgets. I've done it with other processes. I, you know, as part of um, a council, uh, forming a council committee around best practices, um, uh, you know, on and on and on. And, I, and so I am committed to making sure that this city lives up to the values that it espouses for itself in terms of being welcoming, in terms of being accepting um, and, and being compassionate. Uh, and I think that I think we do have a strong record in that regard in terms of social services and housing and houselessness and, um, and, and uh, drug uh, dis disorder and all these other issues that we lead the way on in many, in many cases. Um, can we do more? We certainly can do more. But the challenge, of course, is, the, is obviously the funding structures that we are dealing with. So if it, if it is that folks want us to reallocate um, and change our priorities, um, then that is certainly something that I will be receptive to and I will, I will carry out. The challenge, of course, is um, making those types of major sweeping decisions um, without, a, without some kind of a formal public process so that every voice can be heard and that we get input and that we get, um, you know, we collect data um, we look at the issue, we hear from the stakeholders, we hear from the, you know, the city employees that are involved. Um, that's just, I mean, that's the approach I've taken, whether it's looking at the IT department or looking at, uh, or looking at, um, you know, best practices or looking at, you know, we've, we've studied things like even when we were working on uh, what to do in terms of, you know, uh, Florence Fields and purchasing the Bean Allard farm we paused and put together a committee to sort of study it more carefully and hear more voices. So I am open to that and I'm, you know, and I'm committed to that. And so I'm not trying to force the council to be involved in something um, uh, that I don't take seriously. I do take it seriously. And I, and I, you know, as I said before, we are in a moment where 
our, um, our community wants us to take action and wants us to press for serious reform. And so I'm, I'm, that's why, that's the spirit that I am uh, wanting to collaborate with the city council on. Again, if the council does not want to do that um, and wants to go in a different direction, um, I, you know, I was a former city councilor. I was the former president of the city council. I respect the independence of the city council um, and asserted it plenty of times when I was uh, on the council. So I, you know, I respect the frame of government that we have. And if the council wants to go in a different direction and wants to be independent, that's fine. Um, but that's where I'm coming from on these issues. And I think it's where, uh, I mean, you've had Chief Casper before you, you've, you've, um, you've heard from her. Um, she's made you know, very clear public statements about it. Um, you, she's outlined the efforts she's tried to make over time in terms of reforming the department and trying to move the department in a forward direction and you know, trying to adopt um, you know, some of the progressive policies and things like the you know, 21st century policing um, uh, commission and all these other reforms that she's tried to put forward. Is it enough? Clearly what we're hearing from the community is that it's not. So, um, but again, I think Chief Casper, like me, is somebody who um, cares very much about getting the policies right and making sure that we have the best uh, possible outcome for the people we serve. So that's all I can really say to you is that, um, you know, when we put together this, if we put together this commission, if the council wants to do that um, and they come up with recommendations um, and, and we feel that that's, it's been a fair and open process and that these are, you know, the recommendations that represent our community, um, that I will work to advance at least the ones that I have the ability to advance. Um, and then obviously there may be others that require um, other changes or changes that are you know, maybe outside of our authority or changes that are specific to the council. Thank you for that. You know, I really appreciate your, um, <clears throat> just your attention to detail and policy and, and wanting to make sure that things are right when you move them forward. Um, and I also, um, you know, uh, I'm hearing more about reform in, in the way you're talking than then about actually moving to alternatives and supporting, you know, I understand though, if we reach that, you will go for it. That's what I'm hearing, right? If we reach that conclusion as this body, you will support moving to alternatives to policing and to moving to support human needs rather than policing, but you want that process to happen. Is that correct? Yes, and I, and I, 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 I also don't want to be clear that I don't think the two are mutually exclusive. I mean, I feel like our city and my administration has been working hard to support human needs in our community. And we've been, you know, again, at the forefront in terms of, you know, working on issues like housing and affordable housing and fair housing. And we've been working on, um, you know, a whole range of issues that where we've been leaders. And so, um, and that, that's not going to change. And, but, but yes, that's, that's what I'm saying. Obviously I, I can't, um, I, I can't presuppose what recommendations will come out of the commission or, uh, I, but again, that's, I mean, I believe that if you look at my record, um, I'm someone who has taken these types of studies and I've worked to implement them. Um, like the resiliency hub that I've been before the council several times, which is one of the recommendations that, you know, came out of our study, um, on, on panhandling. And, um, and we're trying to really push that issue forward and work with social service agencies because it, of all the recommendations, um, everyone that we've talked to, including um, people on the streets have said that is the number one need in Northampton. So we are, we are yeah. devoting resources and staff um, and we have a group that's been working on it, um, uh, you know, brought in an architect even to start uh, working on designing this um, this facility, so we are working to advance it. Um, so that's really that's that's all I can tell you in terms of what my commitment would be. Yeah, yeah, and I will. You know, I, I have a whole list of 
suggestions also for the commission, um, which I can go into later. But the, the Resilience Hub is part of that. And I'm, I'm so pleased that you're moving on that. Thank you. OK, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you, Councillor. So I, during deliberations last week, I was talking about us getting to the point of doing planning and coming up with a plan for how we're going to transition to the newer services, to the newer policies, to the newer way that we do policing. And I view this commission as a, an essential part of making that happen. One, so um, there are some important elements here that both the mayor and the council are part of this commission, um, that, that we, we have influence over the commission, but, um, and that it will be providing input back to us. And we don't necessarily have to wait until next March to move on something that seems vitally important and, and, and is a really good idea from the commission. I think the commission, it's a, the, the most essential thing about it is that it's a body that will reflect who we largely aren't as a largely white community. We're asking for input from the people in our community who have been marginalized and been subject to death making over the years that they're gonna provide us their feedback and involve them in the policy making process and advise us. There's certain things that seem really obvious to us, but I think it's really critical for us to have, to honor people who have been marginalized and, and been subject to uh, abuse and murder in culturally to be able to speak back to us. And that is my hope is that we're gonna get a much deeper information there. Um, that to what the mayor was talking about, the, um, his wonkiness, um, I really appreciate that. As somebody who sat in, and I referenced this last week, a lot of IEPs, ISPs, these are the essentials of how services are delivered. These are the, these are the meetings. And the people who really make those things work well are the people who really get how the system works and how all the connections are come together and, and that they work to build the systems, the, the, the different programs so that the supports are there for, for people. So that I, I think it's essential that we, we take this step and that it includes the mayor and us because I think it will allow us to move much quicker. I, I don't wanna see us get into you know, yeah, you know, I'm sure we, we can, um, you know, we can go to battle with the mayor over certain things and he can do that with us. I look at this as a collaboration and, and a place where we're going to come together and we're going to listen to ideas and we're going to move quickly because that's what I heard people say. They want stuff now. And I see this as the quickest way to get there. Um, as far as that other idea about what we can do that's on the agenda for next week, I look forward to discussing that next week. But I really endorse this process and I hope that the defund advocates can see a way to consider supporting it. Um, so thank you. Thanks. Um, if I may just politely disagree with one thing you said, um, and maybe I was just, I'm taking you too literally, but I think you said that, you know, this commission will have the mayor and the city council on it. Uh, you said something like that. I just want to make sure that everyone understands yeah, that. I'm, you know, sometimes right. the words escape me a little bit. No, I just so, want to make the point. We have the appointing authority. And we well, are also, we're, we're, we're giving this body life to advise us. And that, go ahead. Well, I mean, the point that I was just going to make is that all of your points are correct right there, but um, the mayor will not be sitting on this commission, but there will actually be two city councilors that will sit on it. So I, I think that's a distinction to be made. So I, there seems to be a worry about a, you know, a, um, 
an uneven balance of power. But um, in addition to the council having more appointees, two of those appointees are counselors um, where the mayor is not going to be sitting on it himself. Correct, thank you. Oh, Councillor Labarge. Yes, thank you. Um, like I stated before, with um, a resident calling me, we had a lengthy talk and how well educated and experienced she is. And really she's wanted to know how she could apply to be on this commission and all her experience. And on this commission, which was very valuable here for her as a civilian oversight slash review models, transition 91 calls for mental health, houselessness, substance abuse disorder, and other non-criminal service to civilian responders or social service agencies. And that's who I've been dealing with lately, who is well-educated people, well-educated in this field, who are very willing to volunteer to be on this committee. And I think this is valuable because we're getting out of the box and that's what we need to do and go in a different direction as far as exactly what it is saying, saying here on that, on that paragraph. There's value there. I've worked with the Department of Mental Health all my life with many, many people with disabilities. Counselor Nash, you too have the same similar experience. This is direction that we need to go into is getting out of that box, everybody working together, form the commission. And the big problem was people didn't want the mayor to have any control of doing any appointments at all, at all. That's the many calls that I received. So anyways, I wanna move forward. It's time to do that. And I don't wanna see this committee, this new commission, if it is formed, to go quickly on it. Because when you go too quick, sometimes it's not successful. So I think at taking your time and doing what is right will become successful. Thank you, Councilor Shira. Um, thank you. And we would we would very much want the person you were speaking to to apply. So, you know, just to answer your question, um, we will create an application. And um, I have a suggestion for how I think, you know, the council appointees could be appointed, um, which is that the, the two counselors that um, I would like, you know, to appoint to the commission that the three of us, the two counselors and myself would um, sit down and look through all of those applications and, um, and, but as I've been very clear about, we are going to really privilege the voices of people who, um, have been most affected and who, um, whose voices have been marginalized throughout history and particularly on this issue. So uh, I think we are a community that is, has a wealth of experience, um, but you know, we're gonna ask um, people who are white, who have experience, you may not, you know, you may not get chosen. And um, I think it's time for that to be the case, even if you've worked in this field your entire life. The whole thing is everybody be treated equally. Thank you. Sure. That I saw a hand, Councillor Mary. Yeah, I just um, I think I'll, I'll I have some suggestions for the bullet point area, but maybe I'll uh, try to do. I'll do one section first and then if you feel someone else wants to talk, I'll come back to that. I just was, I'm looking at the document itself and it says, I really like this line and I appreciate what you just said, uh, Council Chair, a lot. I think that's incredibly powerful to, to really make um, the choice of how we, how we uh, go about choosing people on this commission. And I hope it will also, in terms of, you know, um, the policing, um, you know, I, I hope it would that would extend to like to the trans community, the queer community, and the um, domestic violence survivors. Uh, uh, domestic violence is not mentioned here at all, which kind of alarms me because it's such a huge issue in this town. And it's it's a boy. Uh, domestic violence survivors are, the, are typically don't always uh, 
have a strong voice because of the nature of it. Um, so that's a suggestion I have later. But I just want to say, I really like this line, uh, rethink how we structure and fund community safety moving forward. I think that's really strong. We're, we're kind of losing your sound. I'm so sorry. Oh, it you, might be that I'm, I could also take this off. Does, can you hear me now? No. I think that that's better. Okay. You're gonna go in and out. Yeah, I think, you know, these things like last one day, you know, I just bought that. <laughs> anyway, um, so uh, so I, I was saying, I really like this line, rethink how we structure and fund community safety moving forward. I think it's really a, a very strong line. I get concerned later when it says can, can transform how the city delivers policing services. Because, um, you know, and I think reforms, you know, I think we all have, there can be debate about these semantics. I, I don't love the word reform. I, I can understand someone else might need something else but, by that. But anyway, this can tra transform how the city delivers policing services. Um, I just I just wonder, you know, I just think, I, I, I think part of the, the point is to see beyond just policing services, right? And that's what kind of this, this strong um, sentence up there um, suggests. So I'm, I, I, that line makes me nervous because I want to explore you know, personally, I just, I think we need to transform our public safety system, right? So that's just a suggestion to look at that line, policing services. Um, and also, you know, someone brought this up, a, a, a call, you know, issues to be studied. Maybe it could be issues to be tailored and enacted might be stronger. Um, under, right before the bullet points, issues to be studied, maybe if, if we mean it, if we don't mean it, we should not put it in there, but issues to be tailored basically to Northampton and enacted. Uh, because they have been studied. I mean, I guess we can look at them in terms of how to carry them out in Northampton. Um, so that's the, that's some suggestion. I personally think because of the, the power differential, if we are going to do this commission, I think that the mayor should have four members that he appoints and council should have 11 because I feel like council's role is to be more directly, you know, we're more directly in touch with a lot of the residents. It's not, you know, it's just, it's just the nature of our job versus the mayor's job. Which we spend a lot more time in the, in the, you know, in our physical wards and such. That's a suggestion. Um, and I, I think um, one thing I, that's kind of um, that I get very concerned about when we start talking about um, social workers and mental health is I'm very, very excited about this idea of transitioning 911 calls. To, I think that's great. I think teams like cahoots, but we have to be very careful about how we do so. A lot of these agencies, you know, um, can, can, whether inadvertently or not, kind of uphold oppressive systems. And I really think I would rather have a department, a community-led department of public safety in which we have our own employees, because if you're using agencies, like, I don't know what agencies would be, I know, you know, the Department of Children and Family Services has historically, um, really um, can disproportionately um, harm people of color and working people and you know, working class people. So I'm, I'm very, you know, I, I'd be very interested in thinking about these agencies and not just assuming because they're social, we don't want police light, right? So I think we need to really look at what this means when we say social workers and mental health workers, we need them. There's wonderful things, you know, programs out there, but we have to be, make sure we're not inadvertently um, you know, adding to the to the oppression because these things are multifaceted, right? It's not just the PD that has this history. ECF has a, a, a very long history this way and some others. Um, and again, I think when you say, uh, you mentioned mental health, houselessness, substance abuse, I think domestic violence has to be right there. It really has to be mentioned. It's a huge problem in this. And we've I've heard individually from residents, we've heard in calls, that this is an area that's broken in Northampton and Northampton policing. It, it, I think it's not, I'm not even blaming the police department fully. I'm just saying that it's, it's an issue that's not addressed and re, most of the time re-traumatizes the survivors. Um, and I understand, yes, if there's situations where you might need armed people if there's, a, you know, at some point. But I think most of these calls you're talking about arriving after the fact and re-traumatizing survivors. So that's something I really, passionately about. Um, and I think we need to add a bullet point, which is be looking at investments that prevent crime. Resource communities have low crime rates. So that we need to look at things that prevent crime, education, housing, jobs. Um, so those are my uh, immediate kind of reactions. And I said I wouldn't go into all of them. Now you don't have to hear them all from me. 
Um, <laughs> Uh, I just really think that these need to be community-led, community-run. Um, um, these any public safety initiative has to be community-led and community-run, and not run by outside agencies that might have a, a bad history with, with folks, especially color. Thank you. Okay. Um. I. I just. Um. I'm. I think we should add domestic violence survivors in there. I think. Thank you. I appreciate that so uh, much. And I'll just say, you know, when when we're talking about social disturbance agencies, I'm talking about like tapestry. Our right, local, tapestry is awesome. Like I guess our, you know, local agencies well, that well, um, the DCF is a local agency. I mean, you know, I'm just saying we really have to be careful here. I see. We were. Um, I mean, I'll I'll let the I mayor speak for himself, but we were we were thinking about our local, right. um, privately run agencies that what, will yeah. have that will you know, end up picking up some of this this right. work and we have to figure out how to work with them to yeah to, to well i appreciate that I, i'm sure that's what you meant i guess i just would yeah i just wanted to put that food for thought but I, i'm sure that's what you meant um mayor i don't know if you wanted to address any of that oh no, no i i that, that was you you addressed it as we discussed um i you know we thinking about agencies like CSO and ServiceNet and Tapestry and Safe Passage, the typical, you know, the agencies that we, we work with now, but that um, some of these diversions may, could possibly go directly to. Um, Councilor Mayor, I, I can't remember if I just asked you this. Could you, could you send me that list as well? I wanna make sure that I got it. Your, your, um, it was still kind of hard to hear you, and I want to make sure I didn't miss anything. Can you email it to me? Um, sure, I would. I, I really appreciate that. Thank you. I will do so. Oh, uh, Councillor Dwight, you're muted. Sorry, it's it's my hope actually that uh, the recommendations that come from us. I think we're we're, we're going to empower an advisory panel. And not dictate the terms for them, and that these recommendations be forwarded to them as they form themselves, as they determine their leadership and they determine their agendas and everything else. They can even they are empowered to define themselves as well. And I think though, you know, I think it's appropriate. All these, in fact, actually, every box that Council Maori ticked, I agree with. Um, but the fact that I think we we have heard from a number of people and we've also here in the council, any recommendations should be drafted up in the form of a, of a letter and submitted to the committee as, as it's assembled, when it is assembled. I mean, I mean, part of the pushback on this is we're hearing a lot of resistance to a committee that doesn't exist yet. Uh, it, it isn't impaneled. It doesn't even have the constituent uh, 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 Participants, it's not yet. Yet we've already it's been condemned before it was born, and I think in order for this uh, this panel, this commission, to really be successful, is that they are as unencumbered as possible, and that they get to manifest their own um, agenda, and it's particularly being populated by people that we would choose knowing that they have these independent minds, independent expertise, and have them determine, as opposed to us, determine essentially the more granular details. Because it, it is true, I mean, the, the, the list of people who have, have not enjoyed the privileges that, for instance, I clearly have, um, have an opportunity to actually make their terms, not our terms. And it would be, it would be, uh, it would be an extension of a lot of the remarks that we heard and that we've heard in the testimony and the calls. Um, at least that's my hope. And I think that's actually how it will shake out. Um, the, the mistrust well, the only thing we can do about the mistrust is earn trust back, and that remains to be seen, and we need the opportunity to do that. And uh, this is one of those opportunities. There are others to be sure. But I do hope that, I hope the counselors in our conversation now, I don't, I, uh, I agree with Council Nash, I do not want to see this die a warning. I want to see this 
and, and Council Thorpe, I want to, and Council Jarrett, and actually, in fact, so far everyone has spoken, that, that this actually has a chance, has an opportunity, because we need this. We legislators need this. We have lots of people saying wonderful things about how we should reallocate funds for housing, for instance. But right now, given the structure we have, we don't have the authority to do that, not in a meaningful way by any stretch. How do we do that? Well, hopefully this panel, that would be my hope, is this panel might have some recommendations. Um, I would defer actually to Council Jared on this, who's actually served on a similar panel here in the community, that, that these challenges are huge. And when you get, I, I don't want to narrow their agenda by defining it for them. I want them to define it for us. Councillor Jarrett. Um, yeah, I'll just go through some of the specific points um, that I've had, that I have here. I uh, definitely echo Rachel on domestic violence and also on shifting the number of appointees. Um, so yeah, meeting human needs. There isn't a bullet point that, that talks directly about that, um, about basically meeting the needs of people to reduce the need to police them. And I think that's a really essential thing that should be in there. Um, you know, meeting needs for housing, healthcare, jobs, food, and education. Now the city can't be the one to provide all of these things, but we can be a strong partner. Um, and the Resilience Hub is, is one, one piece there. Um, I wanna talk about pay. Um, first, think about like uh, us on the council, we're mostly white, we're mostly homeowners. Um, we do get paid nine to ten thousand dollars a year, but when you figure out the hours, it's minimum wage if we're lucky, especially these days. Um, and then that's after running a campaign with no pay. So I'm just saying, there's so many people who couldn't afford to do this job, and they are disproportionately black, indigenous people of color, low income people, other marginalized populations. So if we want diversity on our boards and commissions, then you know, we need to pay people uh, to serve on them. And um, this, you know, I know this commission will be funded. And so though, and those who don't need it could choose to return it. So I think that's something uh, we should strongly consider. Um, there's a, the issue of qualified immunity for officers. I know this might be a state level decision like Colorado just did, um, but I think it's still good for the um, to take a position on it. And um, so I don't know if you know what that is, everyone, but um, you're not liable for law enforcement and actually us too. Um, <clears throat> we're not liable for civil actions that violate someone's constitutional rights unless there is a court precedent already. Um, <clears throat> so uh, that's, that's something to think about. Um, another thought is a majority slash minority report. So um, that so rather than just having one set of recommendations, we could make room for a minority opinion, um, which could allow for a greater diversity of opinion and could be more more nuanced in, in what we're thinking about. Uh, so that's that's a thought, and um, that actually brings to what's the going to be the decision making process. Will it just be a majority? Will it require a super majority to make recommendations? Um, something maybe that they will figure out. <clears throat> um, oh, mentioning um, having a police liability insurance policy or reviewing that idea. Um, you know, most professionals carry a liability insurance, including our teachers. Um, and so it removes the liability from us as a city and transfers it to uh, the officer or professional. So that if they act in a way that results in a claim, their rates go up rather than the city having to cover that. Um, and then maybe a little bit more about the powers of the commission with regard to um, if it's, you know, to um, demand certain documents that might not be available, but from other, um, from just the general public, um, or to require testimony from city staff 
uh, including uh, police department officers um, to kind of give it a little more power and teeth. And um, uh, I think we're already clear we're changing resident everywhere it's a citizen. And um, oh yeah, and then finally a, um, I think we should consider a council vote uh, at our next meeting on it. Um, it could be just a resolution where we adopt the language. I think that would, that would give it, uh, help me feel that we're actually choosing this uh, and, um, and, and vote on it. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, Mayor, you're unmuted. Did you want to address something? I did want to just say one quick thing about the representation piece because um, I actually do get elected as well by the entire city and I'm the chief elected official and um, of the city. And so um, the idea that somehow I don't represent all the residents of Northampton, I just don't understand that um, concept. So, um, but I did when in working with um, the council president, I, I thought it was important to um, distribute the, the appointments the way that we distributed them. Um, and there's seven, you know, there's effectively seven appointees um, on a seven ward council, not including the two counselors themselves. So um, I guess I, I guess I, I guess I want to understand that because we work through that process, but um, it doesn't really feel like a joint commission if it is 90% appointed by the city council or whatever the percentage that you're suggesting. Um, so that's, I guess that would be my, um, my one issue with what the council president and I worked out. Um, and again, I feel like I have a lot of expertise in making appointments to commissions and committees. It's what I'm empowered to do under the charter. Um, and I believe I could make some strong appointments to the commission. So that, um, would be a, you know, different, perhaps fill some different roles um, and complement who the council ultimately decides to choose. Um, just along those lines, one of those, you know, one of the mayor's appointees as it's been designated is also from the Human Rights, Human Rights Commission, which is a mayor appointee, but you know, the council has to approve those um, appointments, so. Yeah. I just want to clarify I wasn't saying that you were elected or anything like that I, or that you don't represent people that wasn't my point I guess I would in terms of balance of power I mean it's it's hard to call a joint commission when we have so much less power actually just as body so that's why I brought up um, looking at that balance it was just an idea but it wasn't implying that you uh, don't represent people mayor thank you but our respective powers under the charter have nothing to do with the powers of the commission. I mean, the commission will be a commission that's set up to do this review. So, um, you know, I'm not going to be on the commission and, you know, the commission will be doing its work. Um, and, you know, the council will have representation on the commission, but still it's not the city council. It's an independent commission. Um, so anyway, that, that would just be my, um, my reaction to that. Okay, Councillor Quinlan. Uh, I did have a couple of things. Actually, I have about five questions, but three of them have been answered this evening already. So I'll just go with the two uh, that, that remain unanswered at this point. Um, and uh, I, I had a conversation today with someone that, that is very interested in being on this commission as well. Um, and, and would be, you know, I, at least in, in my view right now, super qualified to participate. Uh, and uh, one of the, things that this person and I talked about was the, the, the time commitment. Um, and, you know, I noted that, you know, the Charter Review Commission met 22 times last year. Uh, the Select Committee on Pesticide Reduction met 11 times in, in just six months. And so we were talking about that. And, and the question came up that what if, what if this time frame isn't quite enough? Uh, and we were talking about what would the possibility be to create a report and then continue the work uh, you know, maybe make a report about things that were completed and then not. Uh, is that something that you would think the commission itself would decide, uh, you know, or maybe come back to the council and to the mayor and say, this is, this is what's happening. We're not, we're not there on these points, but we are on these points. So we'd like to make an initial report and then uh, continue to, to work and make a final report later. I'm wondering what you think about that. 
I mean, I would be very open to that. Um, you know, we, this timeline and um, the the date for the, what we're, we called the final report um, was really built around having it inform the budget for next year. We didn't want right. this, um, we didn't want this work not to have an impact on that and those decisions. So, um, so I'm just looking at this. Um, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I would be happy to have them continue on if they felt that was needed, but I feel like it's important to me that we have um, information and recommendations that will inform our decision on the budget next year. Right, uh, and then the other, uh, this is more of a suggestion than a, than a question really, but it came, I mentioned that I, I had spoken to another, uh, you know, resident of Ward 1 who said to me, hey, uh, last, year, last week they were all about cutting the budget quite a bit. This week they came back and said this commission they feel is really great. And they felt that we should really invest uh, in some uh, anti-bias slash racism sort of workshop for these commissioners uh, at the beginning of this. Maybe, maybe look into some sort of workshop that could be hired to to uh, to meet with this group, uh, just in terms of of kind of setting a bar. Uh, so I thought I'd just put that out there because uh, I didn't I didn't think it was out of left field at all. I thought it was pretty interesting, um, and uh, I think that was that was what I have right now. Thank you. Um, if you could also send that suggestion, you know, I, I, again we um, we have in here that if you know if if the commission if the commission would like to work with a consultant or. Um, you know, somebody who's done this work before, um, then, you know, we want to empower them to do that and give them the resources that they need. And so that, that could include, you know, any training that they feel they need to be able to carry out this mission. Mayor Narkowitz, did you want to add anything? No, we can certainly explore that. It's, yeah, I mean, again, we're, this is sort of, we're creating this Body new, and so we can we can certainly explore that. Um, I'm not really sure about the salary piece. That's not really something we envisioned when we um, when we created this. It's not something any of our other boards and commissions uh, don't receive any kind of uh, compensation. So that's one I guess I'd have to understand a little bit more. But um, so that's uh, yeah. Um, Councilor Jarrett, uh, just to respond particularly to the mayor there. Um, you know, it has to do, I mean, to, to go back to my point of who can afford to spend the time and um, that we're going to, it, it necessarily, if you don't have transportation or childcare or certain things that it necessarily skews who is available to spend the time uh, doing that job. And when we are specifically trying to make sure there are people who um, <clears throat> are, you know, from certain backgrounds that historically don't make as much money, I think is very relevant. Does that make sense? It, it, absolutely, it absolutely makes sense. This is actually, you know, Councillor Dwight and I have talked about this for years, um, particularly in the context in which you first framed it, which was the council and, you know, how how we open up these bodies to the kind of representation that we're hoping will be on them and the barriers to participation. Um, and, you know, this is an ongoing conversation that we've been having about uh, it, in particular around the council, but I think, you know, I think it's an excellent point. Um, I'm not sure what, you know, what mechanism we have for that, but it, it's, it's something that I think about a lot and um, have, wished were a way that we could structure how we do things. Mm -hmm. Well, please look into, you know, just some sort of stipend. Um, I, I bet it's possible. Hold on. So I guess I'm not asked, I'm not saying it's impossible or, or, or not possible. It's just more what our, what uh, I guess I would need more guidance from the council on what it envisions, what this stipend would be times 15. And how and then how the funding would work for that. So I'm just trying to understand. I, I'm the person who has to sort of manage the day-to-day -day finances and come up with the funding. So I just that would be the um, 
the question. And obviously, if you want to incorporate this, you need to advertise it to people so they understand going in. Um, so these are decisions that would need to be made um, sooner rather than later if that's a direction that folks want to go in. Councilor Mayori. I just had a suggestion um, to, like it would be less overwhelming if we thought about at least those eight seats, um, uh, historically more marginalized folks, um, just trying to give some sort of stipend or any kind of gesture would be great uh, towards those eight folks. That's one idea I have. And I just really want to ask my, uh, I, I appreciate, I just want to get back to appreciating what uh, Councillor Dwight said about, you know, this um, commission define, you know, having the room to find to define itself. I, I really hear that. And um, so I wanted to say that. And I, I wanted to ask my fellow counselors about, I'm just trying to sit with this um, appointment process. I, I understand totally where it's born out of. We can't all meet, um, at least, in, you know, we can't meet outside of council. Um, but I, I guess, you know, if three, if the two counselors who are serving on it are also the ones who are chiming in about the appointments. It seems like a lot of power on just two, uh, three counselors. And perhaps uh, there's a way that, you know, full council could have some input into the appointments um, because the two counselors who sit on it will have, you know, have their time to be, to say their piece. So I'm just throwing that out there uh, to see what others think. Do you have a suggestion? Um, well, I, I guess, I mean, I'm trying to think of ways that, I mean, you could go through, I'm just trying to think of the ways we usually go through, you know, do you go through recommendations and that kind of thing um, that do go through full council or they go through, um, well, I, I guess it depends if it's city services or whatever. But um, yeah, I guess I was, I was looking to, maybe it's something we could discuss in the meeting, you know, in the council meetings um, to review them together, um, at least give a recommendation to the three counselors to you and the other two counselors or something like oh, that? It would, it would absolutely be my, I mean, we would ask, I, I think I said this at the last okay. meeting, maybe we haven't covered it at this okay. meeting, but I'm gonna task that, you know, I'm gonna task the council with going out and one, informing people about this commission and asking people to participate and find okay. Thank people you. Who, um, who would be willing to do this work and who fit, you know, the criteria that we're looking for to empower these voices. So I'm, I'm putting that fully on all of you. Uh, I have some recommendations. I've already got a list myself, but um, this is on all of you to go out and do that work and, and get people to apply. Okay, thank you for, uh, for clarifying. Last meeting was a little overwhelming. You probably said it and I didn't hear you. Thank you. Sure, uh, Councillor Quinlan. Just, just on that topic. Um, <clears throat> so when you you were just to be, I want to make sure I understand this. You think that the two counselors that you would plan to appoint to the commission, and yourself would would kind of select those, and then would the full council approve those uh, at that point, or do you, is that you think that that's is that where it goes? I'm just trying to make sure I understand the process. Uh, so, yeah, I did not mean to because like yeah. So I mean like. Uh, Councilor Mayor, I was kind of talking about city services that, that, you know, we would vet appointments to the mayor's other committees. This is obviously different. So would, would and we would suggest, we would send those to the full council with a positive recommendation. Uh, is that how you envision this going? Or is, are we just going to, as a group, make suggestions for people and then it would, it would be selected out of those and that, and that would be that. that. I just want to make sure I understand that. Right. So, I mean, so when, when, um, when city services looks at uh, um, candidates that have been, uh, you know, the mayor has put forward for appointment, they, those, that's past the application process, right? So they've applied and then the mayor has put forward some, a name and then city services goes through that process. So here's the, you know, what we, what doesn't feel good or comfortable to me, and I don't think we, you know, I, and I, I think you would agree, would be to have a public meeting where we look at every application and we talk about each person yeah. and we weigh whether or not they should be on this commission. That doesn't feel, yeah, oh. yeah like, yeah. like yeah. A, a comfortable or a process that we, that we would want to do. Mm -hmm. So I don't right. think 
that that's going to be what's going to happen. That feels very unfair to people. Um, and I, I, yeah, I guess that that was my question was we wouldn't necessarily vet, you know, all of the, all of the candidates uh, publicly at once, but, but would, would you and the other two counselors bring forward that group to the full council for discussion? Um, I don't, I mean, I, I think I envisioned that we would work together. We would look at the applications, we would make our choices and then we would present our appointees. Um, okay. And, and then uh, I did have a question. Yeah, sorry. I'm sorry to interrupt. No, 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 no. I was, I had paused because I was thinking. Um, and we would go through and, and talk about, you know, the people that we were appointing and, and why we think that they'll be excellent additions to the commission. Okay. And then I had a question about, you mentioned that we would create an application. Uh, should we, uh, should we send you suggestions for uh, items that would be uh, on that application? Sure. Okay. Absolutely. Great. Perfect. Great. Thank you. Um, you're welcome. You know, and so Mayor, you and I talked a little bit about this. Um, Although we're two different appointing bodies, we weren't sure if it felt fair to have two different applications because these will be equal members of this commission, right? So we don't want that to be an unequal um, application process. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I, you know, I think we talked about coming together to come up with an application that would then, you know, people would submit it to us and the mayor. But I think, oh, sorry, Mayor Narkowitz. You're muted. I was muted. Sorry. I, um, yeah, that's that's fine. I, I guess I'm. That's certainly fine. I mean, um, I would assume most people will write a cover. You know, will include some sort of statement or a cover letter of some kind as well. Just, um, but certainly we can come up with some kind of uniform application. But then I assume people will want to submit more information as well, supplemental to that. But um, it does raise the question of if all these if this joint application comes in, then how does that, who decides who gets what applications to choose from? It's sort of an odd setup, I think. Um, yes. That would be the one thing. I mean, I think we could come up, I mean, it's fine. There's 15 spots, but um, certainly um, we can make sure that our applications are uniform and people who want to be appointed by the city council can apply and to, by the mayor. And I suppose people could apply for both. Um, doesn't you know we can figure it out yeah i was just gonna say to the mayor's point we should also probably need to think about um how to think of those eight seats and the, the two bodies appointing you know how that would work well and it's uh, a minimum again like that that is right, the minimum right the, right. the minimum true. that must be represented on this commission right yeah so i'm just saying we, we just need to think of that so we know what the other one's doing so we meet that goal and hopefully surpass it. We just have to think a little bit about that too. The Councillor Foster. I just wanted to go back. Um, the question about stipends I think is a really um, valuable one and, and one that I, I certainly think about as well. And you asked if we had a suggestion and um, you know, perhaps setting aside say $8,000 for eight $1,000 stipends um, for people who, who need them um, in order to be able to have access to childcare um, and make it work for them. Um, so just putting that out there, I do think that that, um, I, I often recognize the privilege I have to be able to serve on council. Um, and um, you know, I think if we're truly trying to get voices um, of people who may not uh, otherwise be participating, that, that's very important to this process. And thank you, um, Councillors Jarrett and Mayori for, for addressing that in the first place. Um, I had a thought and then I was distracted by my own children <laughs> who walked by and now I can't remember what I was gonna say. Um, oh, yeah, I mean, also, you know, um, I think we should look into that. Well, let, well let's discuss that more. Um, we may, this, this commission may be meeting over Zoom, which doesn't mean that people don't need help. Um, it just means it may create more possibilities for people who otherwise wouldn't be able to um, be able to participate 
it also means it could create possibilities for people who can't participate because they don't have the ability to do it remotely like this. Um, I thought I saw a hand. It was oh. mine, Counselor, but oh, okay. somebody, somebody already answered the question. Okay. Uh, Counselor Foster. I muted myself and then thought of another question. I just wanted to double check your thought process on um, city council appointees. So you as president, you appoint two members to serve on the body. Is that is that um, what you're envisioning? Yes. So, I mean, as written, it's not more than right. two counselors um, because we want this to be a body made up of residents of Northampton and, and we want the public to have um, the main voice on this. Um, so yes, so there would be two counselors appointed. I mean, I could appoint less, but um, I think, you know, as I've stated many times, I want to make sure that um, the council is not on the sidelines with these important decisions and that we are, you know, we have, as has been talked about many times, we take as much power and influence as we can as representatives of the people. So um, I, I will say that I would, you know, I will choose to appoint two people from the council. Council, Councilor Mayori. I just wanted to um, check in with you, Councilor Shara, because this is a lot of work for you. Do you need a stipend for child care? Do you need extra support? Because this is really, a, it's been a lot and it's been falling a lot on you. And I, I really want to seriously explore that if you have, um, you know, some needs here to make, make this happen. I very much appreciate that. Um, you know, it's not how we are, uh, as it's structured right now, it's in the charter how we are, um, you know, the stipends that we get. And it's not something that um, I, I, you know, thank you. I greatly, okay. greatly appreciate that. Um, but I, I, um, I am fine, but thank you. Uh, Councilor Quinlan. Uh there was one thing and that you mentioned that these, these meetings certainly could be happening on Zoom, uh, but we had talked about maybe um, the public hearings if they were in person uh, being scheduled in various locations around the city, uh, trying to capture different neighborhoods for public input and, and so forth. So I just wanna mention that because I thought that might, maybe could be included. I'll include that in the other email I send you just for ideas for updates uh, as well, but I wanted to mention it out loud. Yeah, please do include that. Um, yeah, as it as it says now, a minimum of three public meetings. But um, I would, you know, I would like to have them be, if they are going to be physically held in a place, um, then I would like to have them be in different parts of the city. Yep. Great. Thank you. Thank you. You all look kind of cozy right now. Councillor Dwight. You're, you're, I can't hear you. Sorry. I'm sorry, I keep muting myself. I don't want to stifle any further conversation, but I think it's, I, I, if, if no one has anything else to say or ask, I would like to move to adjourn. I'll second that. Um, the motion has been made and seconded to adjourn. Um, okay, we need a roll call on adjourning. Oh, Laura, hold on, you're muted. Councillor Dwight. Yes. Councillor Foster. You're, yeah. Sorry, no. Councillor Jarrett. No. Councillor Labarge. Yes. Councillor Mayori. Uh, so we're voting on adjournment. I'm just trying to. Yes, that's what we're um, And if I would say 
I'm very tired. If some of my counselors do not want to adjourn, then I would, I guess I will vote no for them. Councillor Nash. No. Councillor Quinlan. No. Councillor Shara. No. And Councillor Thorpe. No. Okay, we're right where we were before. <laughs> we have not adjourned. Um, and but I'm waiting to hear uh, more discussion. Oh, Councillor Foster. I'll own as the first um, no vote, Councillor Dwight. It sounds great. Um, and I think we're really close, but um, I just had a little bit more unresolved. Um, Councillor Shara, could you let us know also um, the timeline around um, appointments? And I, I'm sorry, I know it's been said, but if you could just clarify for me, so I really have it here. Appointments um, of, of counselors and when um, we would uh, have an application or process for going out um, into our community and really um, inviting people to apply and to be part of the process. I just kind of wanted to, I, I needed a little more clarity around that. Sure. Um, so, you know, what we have stated is the appointment process shall be completed on or before August 20th. That is um, the council meeting that we have in August. So, um, and then it will convene its first organizational meeting no later than September 10th. Again, you know, the timeline as we've laid out, it is pretty tight. Um, so we felt like this had to be the app, you know, the, the appointment process had to be done by late August for the commission to be able to meet, obviously. Um, so the applicant, you know, I, I think we, are planning on getting moving on the application process as soon as possible. Um, you know, we want to give people as much time as um, we can to uh, know about it for the council and everyone else to be able to share the information and for people to put forward applications and then for us to have to um, go through and, and make those choices. So, we don't have a time, uh, we, we don't have a date for the application. Um, we just have a date by which we have to have the, the, the process of choosing um, finished. That's helpful, thank you. Okay, yeah, Councilor Mayori. Yeah, I, I just uh, brought up a question to Councilor uh, Dwight's point. I think uh, you might have said this, but so the, the Commission itself can can amend timelines and content a little bit and all that, right? I mean, once once the the commission is uh, established, it can. In other words, if those uh, de you know deadlines aren't working or uh, whatever, can they do they or um, or or uh, you know can they add? Um, what's I guess what's the leeway for them to kind of tailor it to? the kind of real life experience of being, you know, when the commission gets started. Right, well, I mean, you know, we talked about the possibility of extending, um, but right. I still feel strongly that I would like to see something in time for it to be involved in the budget process. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, no, I just wondering. I, yeah. I, I, would, I, I look forward to being well informed uh, by next uh, budget process. <laughs> Um, um, but I, you know, and I think they will be reporting to us. Yeah, um, okay. You know, it's it's a joint commission, so they report to us as well. It, and I um, imagine that, we, so we have these report dates set around council meetings. So the report will be given to the council, the mayor will be in attendance. Um, you know, if they, if they can, feel empowered to come to us and say, we don't feel like we can fulfill this timeline, right. but I feel very strongly about the timeline. Right. Uh, I do as well. I, I just, you know, it's, it's a crazy time we're in with, uh, well, an unpredictable time. So I just was wondering about that, but yes, I think, I think it was good to give the timeline that met those goals. Thank you. Oh, Councillor Labarge. Thank you. Anyways, um, I have to agree with you, Councilor Sheriff, because I think it, we will make that timeline. 
I do not see that there will be a problem with that. With appointing the commission, you mean, or with the commission's timeline? With the commission's timeline. I think that, I think we might be okay with that. Depending okay. on how many days out of the month that they have their meetings. Right, which will be up to them to decide. Um, exactly. But I fully recognize we are charging. And I understand the about the part about the budget, the concerns you have about the budget, and that is a concern there. Um, other questions, comments? Are we missing anybody? Everyone got moved around. I don't think so. Okay. Well, we could, you know, think about things right here. I mean, we've got all night, so we can think about more things. I mean, <laughs> You're a night owl. I know, Michael Quinlan. I mean, hey, he's right on the ball tonight. We'll stay to one o'clock or two o'clock in the morning. Oh. Why not, Rachel? <laughs> Why not? We had that coffee. You know, we're all drinking coffee, so that's right. <laughs> I'm not drinking coffee. I don't. You're not? Okay. H2O. Oh, good for you. Hydration. Councillor Dwight. Okay, I'm going to hazard this again. <laughs> uh, and I would defer to anyone who still wants. I don't want to. I don't want anyone to uh, lose the opportunity to say something. But I, for one, really don't want to do another one until two thirty. I don't see that as any productive value. So I'm going to offer a motion to adjourn. And I will suck it down. Um, I, I just want to make sure that there aren't further questions and that there's not something else that people, you know, want to cover. I mean, the motion's been made and seconded. Um, are you allowed to deliberate on adjournment? No. No. Well, I said sign anyway. <laughs> um, okay, I'm not seeing any hands to indicate otherwise. So Laura, I'm gonna ask for a roll call again. Councillor Foster? Yes. Councillor Jarrett? Yes. Councillor Labarge? Yes. Councillor Maori? Yes. Councillor Nash? Yes. Councillor Quinlan? Yes. Councillor Shara? Yes. Councillor Thorpe? Yes. And Councillor Dwight? No. <laughs> That's just me being a contrarian. Sorry. No. We got it. All right. All right. We are adjourned. Thank you.